We've already approved the agenda. We did that prior. Um, so six o'clock was when we were going to talk um, in to the Historical Society in regards to uh, potential hall rent uh, costs and activities. So. Okay. So as most of you know, I'm there it is on the door. Thank you. So, um, tell me about the right house with you. We are really looking for a zero rent. Right now, we are supposed to be paying you $200 a month, $2,400. Um, if we continue paying you $2,400, insurance at $700 a year, I don't see us being a museum in three years. And I think that'd be a great loss for our time. We do a lot for, for the town. Um, kind, kind of told a lot of the two down there. Um, we're keeping the history of Bethel alive. No place else in Bethel. Is what, what, what we have stored down there isn't in the town office. And my directories? I'm, yes. There's yep. nothing like we have down there any place else. We currently have 100 and, uh, roughly 175 members who pay you to us at five dollars a year. And so today we collected fifty-five dollars in news. We are mailing out roughly when we mail our newsletters and we have one coming out hopefully in September. We're mailing roughly about two hundred and six to two hundred and fifteen um, newsletters out. It costs us money to print them, it costs us money to mail them. Anyone that's 80 or over, they get free lifetime membership. So some of those 175s are um, over 80. So we, we won't see any dues from them. So um, like I said, we've only collected from 11 people this year. And, um, we do have hopes of publishing two books, in the, hopefully in the next few years. So, um, one, we have a book downstairs, um, the 1895 Bethel Illustrated book at Billings College. There is one being worked on right now for all of the 20th century for of, of, of that. Um, hopefully we get that done. And it's working hard every day on it. So hopefully that gets published. Um, and then Mary Floyd is really working hard on Bethel businesses. All of the old businesses that we've had in Bethel. She's working on that. Um, my question and we keep, like I said, liability on the building, um, on the contents of this building, and the one at the Brick Church. There's two copies of that for Sure, you. thank you. That cost is at $700 a month. A year. A year. A year. Um, so, and I see us having an increase in that sometime. We haven't in the last couple of years. We do pay a membership every year for ourselves to the um, Vermont Historical Society. That's another expense we have. Um, we are trying to get our schools, our local schools involved, get them to come down for tours. We talked about doing an essay where the kids in, in the schools, by the grade level, can write an essay where we will be giving them a prize. So prizes cost money too. Um, and like I said, we are keepers of that history. So we'd really like to see it zero right. Mary, have a church, did you have something yes. to say? Yes, we're, we're very proud of our museum. Um, we service uh, travelers as they come through and ask about families that used to live here. A uh, lady came last Saturday and she has just bought the Denison House, which is the brown house above where the fish are on the wall as you go up 107. Um, she was looking for information and she said that she will be back. Um, the, uh, we have resources and materials and books and pamphlets and uh, we try to find venues for bringing them out and, and trying to sell them to uh, those who are interested. Um, we also um, Printed, as she mentioned, a newsletter featuring historical events. And uh, people 
let us know as soon as we send one out that uh, they appreciated it, they liked the history that of Bethel and the surrounding area that we put into that. We put pictures sometimes, we put a puzzle or a quiz. <coughs> we have an art show that uh, Susie Feedback, who has now passed on, but she had an art show for twice a year, spring and, and fall. That seems to bring people into the town as they go through. They'll see the sign and they want to come in and see. And the people who do the paintings and various art objects are people who are local quite often. Some of them are, but um, it gives them a venue. We, we have speakers, too, who come in. And they have a lot of knowledge on the history of our area. Dr. Menzinger came in one time and talked to us about the 27th flood. And we had uh, Dr. Worry come in and talk to us about Civil War medicine, which was very interesting. And we invite, of course, the public to come and join us in those talks. Um, we just uh, are, as I said, very proud of our museum. And we're going to try to keep it open as much as we can with a small group that we have right now, but at least after we've come through the pandemic, it seems to be that uh, we'll be able to do more. So what is the current, Therese, do you know what the current agreement, I mean, is there a written agreement? Is it a... <laughs> Supposedly, you but know, we, I guess no, we can't find it. We don't have a copy. <laughs> Joanne can't, you said you didn't have it. I never had it. Kelly went back and looked in the minutes. And yes. we found where there was a discussion about it that the select board signed one, but we can't find it. We, and they didn't, you know, copy it into the minutes or anything. We've searched, we can't find it. What we did find was they had mentioned it. I think you've got a historic preservation grant, and um, that, and it was mentioned in the historic preservation grant that they were reaching out in agreement. But we did find the minutes where they adopted one, but we've never, we've searched and we cannot find a hard copy. And so we called Joanne and she said, she didn't have one either. <laughs> we don't. Yeah, so I, I don't know, yeah, we've looked, but we can't find it. So I don't know where it is. But we know that's the agreed amount because it had been, 2400 because it had been that way in the town reports for a long time and there was no everybody agreed that it was 2400 a month but when the lease was supposed to renew or a year what well, yeah not a month when it was supposed to renew nobody seems to know when it was supposed to renew either mm. or we don't know if it was in perpetuity was it around the time when the renovation was done when the it was one done at that time and then later again it was mm -hmm. like yeah mm -hmm. when the renovation was done and then we moved in here and uh, a little after that, the agreement came about paying the higher end, which was $400 a month. We couldn't afford that. We couldn't afford it. We couldn't afford it for a little bit. And then, uh, and then it got down to $200 a month. And right now, especially after COVID, as you know, everybody is hurting. And at the beginning of the renovations, we tried to make as much money for the museum. I remember those half moon windows, all of them around. These are new, they were all replaced. And one day I'm going by and I see the dumps are full of them and I asked the guy, uh, the wall uh, project monitor, where are these windows going? He says, they're dumb. He says, can I have them? He says, go and help yourself. Well, we made about eight hundred dollars out of those windows. In other words, and we, uh, when I say we, we mean the historical mm -hmm. side, and not me mm -hmm. or anybody else. Certain people of the community help us. They refurbished them and everything. Uh, we gave a couple. We donated a couple to one of them. Probably is still in the capital of Pizza. The then owner Jim Fisher. He was a great supporter of. His so we thought he wanted to have one for, and he loved it, it's right there. Uh, we sold a couple of others for $200 a piece. It didn't cost us anything because the people who renovated them, they gave it out as a donation to the society and the town. 
So we are not shading, we are not going around with a hands extended. We need money, we need this, we need that. Whatever we need, we try to make it ourselves. So, uh, so that's, that's uh, the case. Uh, no, I was, I guess I was just kind of under the impression all these years that, you know, the, maybe the state had some sort of formula that, you know, of a yearly stipend that they gave out historical societies to pay for right. potential building rent and things like that. So yeah. I, I just assumed no, we the $200 a month was maybe, it was like a state handed down, mm -hmm. you know, rental thing. Um, I didn't know that they paid it directly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I saw that we did see the discussion where it went from four to two. We could see that in the minute, so we did see that. No, they made the agreement themselves um, years ago. But um, I just wanted to say that, that two of our books have won uh, prizes um, in, from the Vermont Historic Society in Mount Pelier. Um, one is the fellow who designed this building and the other was uh, the Italian bones and, and uh, stone stones, stones and bones. <laughs> I don't know if you know it, but Bethel was full of Italians <coughs> and some years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, Italians are the ones that build, help build the Peabody Railroad office. Ninety percent of the workforce was Italians. Uh, so, you know, no Union Station in Washington, D.C., that's Bethel White. We're all over the world. Our, our pieces of Bethel are all over the world. Well, even today, after I'm out of circulation with society six years now, I'm still getting phone calls and requests from around the country. People are asking me to, if I have time to go and find a grave for this one, that one, and all. If I have the time, I'll try to do it. If I don't, I tell them, hold the town hall, maybe they can uh, help you there. No. So it isn't that we sit and still doing nothing. We, we preserve the town as much, we want to preserve the history of the town as much as we can. So. So what do you think, Therese? I think that you will have to, if you want to waive the rent, then you'll have to make a motion to do that. Since I obviously can't sign the lease, but it would be good to have in the minutes documented if that's what you're going to do. If you're going to waive the rent, reduce the rent, whatever it is you're going to do as a board, uh, it's totally up to you. And um, there is some past rent right now that's outstanding, correct? Yes, sir. Are you asking them to we waive would like your? You to waive that too. That cash rent, I think, comes to about thirty-six hundred dollars. That problem. I don't think it's been paid since the last February. Okay, that's what I was thinking. It had been a while, like but I, I just can't see why that didn't happen. So yeah, but so I wasn't sure. So I so so it's a so it's moving forward as well as it looks like a past issue. We, okay. We assume dependent pay. Okay. But we would like that way. So if you waive that, that would, uh, there's a couple other things that are going to cost us. We still want to do a World War II plaque, like the World War I down, one down on the front of the building. We've priced that. We've been hesitant to do it. We've seen a price of 3100 to 3500 to do it. If that rent was waived, we'd be able to do that plaque. We don't know for where for sure. Um, I think Janet would like it on the other side of the building. We've talked about asking on Rock of Ages for a big piece of granite and putting it on that. We don't know yet where we want to put that. But we, we really should do it. And then after that one's done, we would like to go do all the other wars. Some of the wars we don't have to, if you go back to the Indian War, we might have had eight veterans or something, but we would like to do all of them. Have you ever done, just out of curiosity, because I don't know, it's more of a historical question, have you ever done a capital campaign um, to raise money for any specific thing, like when you were moving into the hall, or when your books, or I, I wasn't sure what you've done. We, we've done a coin drop, two coin drops for the um, memorial that would cover maybe half of it, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, 
we have in our newsletter we've done campaigns. Yeah. And um, we brought in one time a year ago about eight nine hundred dollars. When Heidi was still around, I mean, yeah. doing the newsletter and all, I got the being stamp letter from a big uh, member of the American Philatelic Society. They haven't fundraised every year, which they call it the Mighty Black Campaign. Mm -hmm. So I figured we, I copied it. We send letters out, and mm -hmm. I ask the members uh, if you figure you connect, for, uh, collect, donate four dollars a month for a year. Imagine what we can do with it. We got few responses at the tune of eight hundred and seventy dollars. Mm -hmm. Not much, but plenty for a few people. Huh. And we just thrown the idea to do doing that again this year. So, yeah. Um, Since COVID, though, we we fallen behind on things. Our group has gotten smaller. We've opened our museum up, I think, three times now since we've been able to. We're trying to open it up twice a month. It's hard when there's only like six or seven regulars, but hopefully, as we go, we will get more. Yeah, I was just curious. I I didn't know. So thank you. And I mean, we understand every penny counts as about. I think if we had our taxpayers here, they would say, "Wave the Ashland, let the museum go." If we took every one of them on the door. I wish they'd all come see it. Maybe then they would be here to tell you that. Yeah, we should do something yes, maybe uh, for I town of Fort uh, Make I'm a saying, uh, The museum, in my my opinion, provides very essential service to the uh, village of Bethel. People going through it and so on, quite often stopping and asking for information. We're kind of like a resource a center, a resource center for the community. Uh, people that uh, need to have information about particular buildings and houses where they are familiar or where they live. And I think the, the society here is very important as a resource center for people coming through about it. And it's a resource center for not only uh, people traveling through, but also for uh, the village itself. So the museum has a lot of different part, important information uh, for that, that particular need that, that in every community uh, does have. So I think that our society is very much involved in that, providing that particular service. At least once a year for the last few years, we have invited the um, elder sisters and brothers from the Joseph Smith Memorial down to help our people do genealogical research too. And when we have them, we do have a lot of people. They'll sit down, they'll help them find their family, help them start their, their tree and stuff. So we're trying to So what's the fourth? I, I just uh, had a comment on the fact that uh, I don't see anything in uh, any of the media, whether it be Facebook, or any of those um, front page forum or or we even do have a historical society Facebook page. Okay, I'm not. Anyway, I don't. I don't look at that. What my point being, I'm just thinking that maybe there, there's some other way, some way to get more of the info of the need and then the info of what you have out. We've had I don't know what I don't know what that answer yeah. is. We, but, we don't need we don't we don't like to stick our hands out. We are proud people. So we we debated a long time to come put our hands out to you guys. Um, we do advertise on our Facebook page. Um, we've had Mary Kelly come into the museum, so we she took a picture just last week of us taking somebody on tour. Are they, are they I have to the top page? Kelly and get it on the page. They link to the I don't I, yes, yes, they are. Yep, I remember seeing there's a thing about the Bethel. I know there's a link about the Bethel Historical Society. Um, and I'm assuming that somehow they're linked to the town. Like if she puts something, Kelly can like it on the town's Facebook page. So, And um, Joanne's going to reach out to Kelly about some oh. front porch oh. forum and some stuff. Yeah. I, I was amazed at what you have down there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I went in when they first moved in, and it was all kind of stuffed in there. Mm -hmm. And it was not impressive at all, but I'm very impressed. Mm -hmm. 
I think what you do is very, very important, and I think that there are many, many people, more than what you have on your membership list, who would be supportive. And you're not putting your hand out if you ask the citizens of this community to provide support. What you are doing, the people in this community are generous. They want to give. They are already giving to churches, to this group, to that group. You're just simply saying, here is an opportunity for you to support something you believe in, which is the history of this town. You're not asking or begging, you know, people to give you some support. Uh, a good financial campaign reaches out and it gives people an opportunity to express themselves through financial support, even if they don't choose to be a member. Uh, so I would encourage you to think long and hard about that, uh, about reaching out beyond just the membership. And I don't, and I, I pick up on what Dave said, I don't know what you have done in terms of recruiting members either, which is another way to increase that that base of support. I'm not saying we should or shouldn't reduce the rent. I'm simply saying there are other ways for historical societies to, to receive the funds they need in order to do the work that they do. Uh, and so I, I, I just... that ads in the Herald where we put membership form right in there. Yeah, okay. We have done that. I feel like we've done a lot to get it out there. When we open the museum, we put it on our Facebook page, we try to get it in the newspaper, we put our um, little family, the Fairbanks family down there on the sidewalk, the wooden figures of them, we go right out to the sidewalk and we put the um, big open the museum open sign. And sometimes we you know that it's sold. Yeah. We have sat down there not at it sold, even after advertising it. I I think we can do more. I will reach out to Kelly about the community forum page and stuff like that. Well, I'm, I'm specifically recommending fundraising. Uh, and and that you think about it. I'm not uh, but there's a different kind of an attitude that I'm suggesting. You're not with your hand out. You're not begging. You're giving people an opportunity to direct what they are already doing and to include you in their giving. We've done this and we're doing it. In 2007, I started doing a postcard and stamp show in Bethel. And it went on for 10 years. And over the period of 10 years, that brought into the society about $20,000. <laughs> no. We've spent that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you, you know, you, yeah. you, people give so you will spend it. Yeah. They don't yeah. give so you spend it. Build up a bank account. <laughs> in the museum, building cabinets, buying printers or whatever else. Sure. So, we paid a good price for those bookcases. So, I, I think you folks do a tremendous job down there. I've read most of the books that you have down there, and it's just fascinating stuff. So, I'd like to make a motion that we. <clears throat> eliminate the monthly rent and neutralize the balance um, that's owed. Second. All in favor? Good. Okay. All set? Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Well, the way you say in my personal collection of Bethel, I collect Bethel for the last 50 years. I, I dare to say that I almost have every town report from 1900 on. And one that, I don't remember the year, but the town of Bethel had an idea of increasing the number of select board from three to five. And two years later, I can't remember the funny way it was described, but they decided to cut it down back to three because there are so many disagreements among the same people. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. and, and then, you know, and then, I said, 
is a funny thing, it's a human thing, not, but it's true, I'm not making a story up. Mm -hmm. My dream is sometimes to find everything, put them in order. Uh, I'm not going to keep them forever, I'm looking to sell it sometime, but as long as I'm alive, they'll stay here in heaven. There's a lot of information that we know. Well, again, we thank you for everything that you do, and you know, we know that your time is valuable, and you put a lot of time down there. So, um, so thank you, and thank you, thank you for taking the time to check out our museum. Yeah. Sure. And, yeah. and the replies that they that you bring us, so please see those things. There's so much more to see going back. Uh, some is funny, some is serious, but you learn every time you look at the past, that's how we see it. So. I love that because if we could only learn from looking back at the past. As a matter of fact, there's so many people are art. Errol newsletters, Heidi found the, we follow. Thanks, Joanne. No, thank you. I don't yeah. know how we say it, but it says that. Yes. Uh, we are looking, continue. you know, continue to look at the past in order to give us a clear direction towards the future. So, yep. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Take care, Nick. Have a good evening. Yeah, Nick. yeah. drive safe. What's the story of the town hall? Who's that the town? Um, I, 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 their name escapes me right now, actually. I'm, I, you'd have to ask Kelly. I, I'm drawing a few blanks. Uh, no, I haven't had many. I haven't, well, we haven't used it because of COVID, so we kind of laid somebody off for a while. We can purchase 200 chairs like this with the money we got from the grants. And, and I see the chairs all over the building right now. Oh, huh. So, you know, uh, somebody needs them downstairs, they bring them up, and then they, you know. Don't bring them back. Don't bring them back. Exactly, that's about right. In the kitchen, there are two washing machines. One of them is supposed to be downstairs by the other meeting room. Yeah. I think we walked up here. Oh, probably. Uh, People don't put anything What back. I'm saying is, if we don't keep things in order, yeah. some things, sometimes things are going to start disappearing. Oh, sure. I think that's true. I'll, I'll mention it to Kelly because she does the walkthrough with people. So right. I'll let her know. To put, yeah, tell them to put it back. We spend too much money, too. Ex just like that. Exactly. I'll make a note to talk Thank to Cal. Thank Thanks. you. Have a good evening. Yes. All right. Kevin Barry. Yes. Come on down. Okay. All right. So I need to brainstorm with you guys. Actually, I need your opinion. Um, so we need to get people with specific needs into the Blossom Block. So as you know, on the LeVere Block and the Blossom Block, I only own the footprint to the building. It's impossible to get one into the LeVere Block by the way it sits right now. The Blossom Block, we have a chance of it, and so I need to know what your ideas are on Approaching on to using part of the sidewalk for the ramp to get people in. Because you'd specifically asked for a three foot wide by 12 foot long. So it's under the, you know, obviously it's 100 square feet, then you're going to get a zoning permit. So you're kind of under the threshold. And you had said you wanted to leave about three feet open for pedestrian, which you, well, yeah, you the felt fire... was the same distance that Cocker yeah. Little has left open. Yes. Okay. That's what I told the select board. Okay. All right. Um, that was one of the ideas, yes. Yeah, so you have a rise to run issue to get them in. Is there, and there's no room in the building to, like uh, the town no. office, you kind of come up this ramp and then you kind of come in and there's this, in this way, this way, yeah. you know, to come in because we had to make it up somewhere. Yeah, right. We don't have that option. That's what so we have a lot of competing, we have a lot of competing things going on. We have the ADA requirements, uh, which are administrated by the fire and safety guys from the state. We have the historic preservation people. Like one, one guy that I was brainstorming with, he says, just take out this bay window, we can do it. Just like, it's like, yeah, that's not gonna work. Um, and then we have the town because you own the sidewalk. 
So if you did your three foot by 12 foot, does that meet the ADA requirements? Because um, about the rise to run issue that you have? Technically it would. It would depend on what Jay Moody comes up with. You know, like he doesn't like us restricting any movement on the sidewalk. Like he doesn't like having those sidewalk signs outside the doors. Um, Who's Jay Moody? Is the fire safety inspector oh, for this area? Okay, I was like, why is the name? So, okay, so um, so I just need to put everything together to see where everybody is on things, and then I can come up with a plan on. Okay, the town will allow this, and the state will let me do this, and and. Is yeah. uh, Moody going to require railing? What's that? Are they going to require railing? They usually do. Yes. Be yeah, and it's ugly. I mean, I think, you know, and I, I was trying to talk with Paul. And I know right when I came on to the select board, we had, and I don't know if it was directly with you or not, but at that time there was some talk about some of the accessibility to buildings in the downtown and, and you know, what we have for sidewalk to, you know, to work with. And, and I know we had talked about that, you know, that your two buildings were, um, and I think maybe even the Arnold block the way it was setting it were challenging to get yeah. um, accessibility in there. Um, and I guess what I would be, you know, looking to see is if you, you know, I think that we're all, you know, speak for it a little bit, but I think we're all, you know, business friendly and, you know, whatever we can do to make things accessible within reason, um, you know, that we're open to. I guess what I would be looking for is just you know, if you came to to the select board with some sort of, and it doesn't have to be a PD stand plan, but something that shows kind of on yeah. paper that this is what we need at a minimum to meet the criteria here so that we can look at it and actually say, okay, or maybe even walk out in front of your building and so we can actually see the picture and how does that, you know, how would it potentially impede you know, walking traffic or, or yeah. other traffic in front of the building, and then, then at least we can see it. Because right now I'm thinking like three by twelve, and you know, how does that look? And how, you know, yeah, oh, you also you also have to have a landing coming out to make yeah, come which out. we have room for the landing because the bay windows come out, okay, and the doorway is recessed within those two okay. bay windows. So there's a square footage requirement. Yeah, so for the yeah, you need yeah. five by five yeah. by five. It's five square feet. Yeah, five by five. I mean, five I go. Five. I would just be. You know, curious. Well, first, curious to see what the plan would look like. You know, to meet the yeah. minimum threshold for that. Um, that way, I can get a better picture of yeah. my head what it looks like. And, and the actual railing is part of the structure of the ramp, so it's not necessarily hanging out further than three feet. <clears throat> you know, I think the outside dimensions of the of the apparatus would probably be over three feet because yeah. you want three feet on the center on the inside right, on the inside you get your framing yeah like your railings are probably your framing so yeah but it ends up being more than three feet yeah. it ends up being is there any Teresa? is there any like so, minimum yeah. standards that we have to comply with you know sidewalk width wise no to make them compliant or keep them well, I mean, you're going to want to make sure that people can get a wheelchair and a stroller and that the remaining, you know, piece that you leave open is open, you know, for people to get through. So, and, and the statute pretty much leaves it up to your discretion. Certainly, because he's currently, it depends on the size. If the diameter, if the size has changed, you go under over 100 square feet, you're going to need a zoning permit. If you stay under the 100, you don't. But either way, it's going to need the select board's blessing, right. whether it's zoning You'd have to get a zoning permit blessing from the DRB plus the select board. But um, I would say if, you know, it doesn't seem to be, and I've never heard of an issue um, in front of Cockadoodle, and they ended up building a porch and the handicap ramp. So, um, you know, I think, like you said, you were all aware that he needed accessibility to his buildings. And you want him to, you know, for economic development purposes, we need access to his building. Do you have a business that's preparing to come in, or is this just... We're in discussions with somebody, okay. and that's what kind of brought it to the brought it to the head. Yeah. Is it both blocks or just what's that? Just one. We're talking one entrance to the blossom block. Yeah, we're just talking right now about the center space. Right. You know, it would be in the long term. It would be really nice to you know like the only way to solve the problem in a in a big way is to 
change the grade of the street and right. bring your sidewalks up to meet the buildings right. so that we can at least have a fighting chance a, a shot at getting getting ADA compliancy that way. And that's the only really pretty way. Virgins did it and it's really great. It costs, mm -hmm. you know, hundreds money, and hundreds but it looks of nice, you're right. I know the um, certainly that's where the better connections, Bethel for all, ages eight to eighty, certainly something you know that they're looking at accessibility and I did ask them as part of it that I'd like to see tips for people who already own businesses in Bethel how can you know what can an owner do to make your building more accessible on you but also yeah I mean obviously if we're going to do it we need to I keep saying in bite-sized pieces something we can actually afford to do but right. it's down the road but I think uh, you know it sounds like certainly I agree with Chris that if you were going to do it a plan like what you were going to make the materials out of what it's going to look like a little drawing and but yeah, yeah, the minute you go over that square footage, you'll need both, unfortunately, a zoning and not what trying to. What kind of elevation do you need? We have, what I'm shooting for is one foot of rise, so that gives us 12 feet of run. Um, we're a little over, we're a little over a foot right now. So I'm trying to figure so out how. That really wouldn't work as far as lifting the sidewalk both ways. No, he would have to start, you know, back at the gas station. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Right. So yeah, it's not, you know, and the the Arnold block is it's impossible. There's just no way. Right. You know, you got 42 inches, I think, to that deck. Yeah. So. It's tiny there. No, I would. I mean, I would. I, I would say, Kevin, I don't think again they need to go as far as like it needs to be a PD stamp drawing, but if you have like. Kind I'll of come a rough down drawing because we could give you permission tonight and then you say, you know, you talk to so and so that says, well, you're going to need this and it's going to go over this, and, you know. Yeah. Um, well, so thank you. That's, uh, yeah, that's good to know. So it's nice to know that you, you guys are open to different ideas. So when I meet with the fire safety guy, he may have a problem with impeding on the sidewalk. And, and from what I'm hearing, you're saying is like, as long as it's okay, as long as it meets all the specs, it's okay to impede on the sidewalk. And we do have a super white, we, we, the Blossom Block has the whitest part of the sidewalk right. of any of the buildings. Yeah, as long as the piece you leave open is accessible, yeah. I think, you know, wheelchairs, strollers, you know, that type of thing. And maybe, maybe you can talk to the uh, district or something, maybe they have some information I can ask on the minimum width of the sidewalk, you know, yeah. Yeah, it maintain. depends on the, well, it depends because Man, some towns only have sidewalks for a reason. I was going to say, you know, some towns know. only have four foot sidewalks, so but I can ask for a spot. But the oh. other thing is the maintenance, you know, when we're clearing the sidewalks going down through there, it's going to be a little bit of a problem that's going to have to be yeah. addressed. Yeah. Oh, have, have we cleaned in front of the business? Have you cleaned in front of the businesses? Right. Well, what do you do in front of Cockadoodle right now? It just probably gets plowed up on there, up on well, there. Well, Cockadoodle is there. covered. Yeah. No, I mean, he's talking about the snow plow pushing snow. He's yeah. probably pushing it into the street if he's yeah. going one way. He's angling his plow to push yeah. it. And you keep your shovel out anyways. Yeah. You have, we don't have any lamp posts or anything. Yeah, right. Not on the blossom block, no. No, I, I would just say if we get some sort of, once, once you meet with and find out you know, what, the, what the minimum dimensions are to make yeah. this work, um, you know, and get that information to to trees and you know at least we can look at it and then we can put okay. it on the schedule to, to give okay. you that, an approval on it. I mean I can't see yeah. why we wouldn't. And know, I'll unless, ask Chris. Unless it, we get something that says well you're going to have a minimum mm -hmm. footage through the air for traveling public you know. Right um, right yeah. yeah. I'll reach out to the B trans and get some information. I'm also meeting with a guy um, for pedestrian safety actually I have a meeting with him Thursday at 1 so if I find something I'll just email you and let you okay. know. Yeah, that'd be good. John any, on Thursday. Great. All right. Any other questions? The uh, being in the historical district and with all of those requirements, you can't go inside and put a ramp in front between the the, the windows and the the commercial space. Uh, there. There, I have seen done where you put an interior ramp. It changes the right. outside um, view because you have to put a mudroom on the inside and you have to have enough run. You know, like, so you cut the sill, right? 
Right. So the cells are eight by eight, and then you got some sheathing on top you, of it. You lower the door. You lower yes. the door down, and you start your ramp at the door, and you come inside. So you're cutting everything in the cellar, in the ceiling. You cut that out and reframe it, and you come in. It's a problem. It creates a, you have to put railings on it. It changes the whole dynamics of a room. Right. Um, but that is, I have seen that done in certain circumstances. And it takes square footage away from the user's space. Yeah, and you have to have railings on both sides of that so that people or don't fall there. off the... And you have to have a turnaround radius. Yeah, and then you got this door that's like way inside the room. So... Um, yeah, I would just, again, I would just get your drawing in, or maybe it's two options. Maybe you come to the board and you say, here's option one and option two that meets the minimum okay. requirements and you know, maybe one impedes a little more than the other or something and we can work that out. I mean, okay. It's definitely, I've been, you know, knowledgeable of the situation since I came on board that we had talked about accessibility to those buildings yeah. um, for a while, so. Yeah. And the town needs you to develop them. You know, people want economic development, so obviously they're willing to meet you to yeah. help you to get that, to get people in to install whatever it is you're gonna. Yeah, just get that back to Teresa and she can give it to us and we'll take a look at it. All right. All right. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. Great. I want to Christy. Hello, Teresa. Point of order. I did not show up at 5 30. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good to know. Hey, we were here. I was here too. All well, just like last time. <laughs> well, that's a good to know. Hey, gave you 30 minutes to do something else. That's right. <laughs> so I think we just have um, one thing that we um, talked about and came to consensus on at our last equity and inclusion committee meeting, which is just a proposal ask of y'all that um, we could um, have select board meetings be a hybrid model of both in-person and via Zoom. Um, we talked about that from the vantage point of accessibility for people um, who uh, have kids at home, um, people who cannot make it downtown because of transportation or other accessibility issues. And I think we did see a little bit of an increase in public participation during the pandemic at certain times, perhaps because um, the meetings were on Zoom. And so we wondered if that was a possibility for y'all. And then the second part of that is just if there's anything our committee can do to help make that happen. Um, we thought specifically because there's already someone, hello, <laughs> um, <laughs> videotaping um, what's happening and there's sound being recorded that it doesn't feel like it would be that far of a leap to also be live streaming that through the Zoom platform. Um, but if there's anything we can do to help make it happen, we'd love to do that. I don't know how, I mean, Orca records them, so they're all, meetings are accessible, people read the minutes. I met with a gentleman tonight who follows our minutes, and he made an appointment, I, and came down at 4.15 today, and I met with him, and the Orca is on their website, you can see the minutes to all the select board meetings, so if someone wanted to see them, there's, they get them online, they can get them here, but, so I guess the question would be more for Orca, um, because uh, depending on the setup of Town Hall, what's available, how it, if it can be live streamed or not, I don't know. And that's a one-way stream too. Just remember that. That's yeah. we just, you know, I've been to a town where we live stream, but it's no call, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah. and um, so, so the minutes. So currently, the meetings are available on Orca's website. People can see them and they can read the minutes. I think we were thinking more for live participation, so if people had something for public comment, for example, um, to be able to do that in real time through the Zoom platform. Okay. All right. I wasn't sure what you were looking for. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a note. Thank you. One of the issues we constantly battle with them here is acoustics. Mm -hmm. We've had a couple of meetings here where we have people participate. Um, we're living without a town there. A couple of weeks ago, I think we had somebody at the last the transfer station get together. We had, which is very difficult to follow on uh, you know, a little screen to 
have somebody be able to participate and know what they want to speak, for example, and, and the acoustics of them hearing the, what's going on. It's a real challenge, technological challenge. So if we could come up with some way to technologically make it happen, um, then we did have more participation. I did notice more, more names across the top of the Brady board um, when we were having our Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it, was good. it was good to have that. I mean, I did, uh, after talking with Therese, I did go in and look at our previous meetings when we were in uh, Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you take out, like, if you take out the appointment, so anybody that may have an appointment that night, you just kind of block them all out and you look to see who your actual uh, public person <coughs> that night. There really was no change between what we have here tonight, which I would say, you know, our normal three to five versus the call, which was like normal three to five. Um, so I didn't really see like, you know, I, I think we always talk about it, it, you know, like when we went to Zoom, we we're like, oh, this is gonna be great, we're gonna have more participation, people could just call in, you know, because right now the biggest thing is people are like, oh, I don't have time to go to the meeting, and, you know, I don't, and we did the Zoom and it was like, yeah, it's just the same thing, you know, I'm like, you know, you know, even on some of the, you know, hearing type stuff, you know, there wasn't any more participation than there was at the in-person ones. You know? It's like moving town meeting from a month, from a day <coughs> Tuesday to a Saturday. Yeah, it maybe like, it's, it's always the same amount of people, maybe different people, but it's, yeah. you know, pretty similar. Like, it just didn't seem like we got more out of it. I mean, I guess, I, I guess the question I flip back is, you know, what, between what we're currently doing, you know, what, what are the major conflicts or, or issues with, you know, currently, like Teresa's saying, currently we have, um, you know, currently we have a building, well, most of the time it's under construction, but mm -hmm. currently we have a building that is handicapped accessible, so, you know, all individuals should be able to attend in, in person if, um, if they are willing to do so. Um, we do have everything, most of the time, but once in a while Orca doesn't come, but most of the time Orca is here. Um, and um, you know, so we have those pieces of it, um, and you know, I was just, I'm just comparing it to. I go to a lot of other town uh, meetings just from my my work, and often like just looking at a small town of Bethel, like we have. In a lot of cases, we're a little more advanced than most of the other towns when it comes to you know, you go to the board meetings of some of these other towns, and it literally is the same thing. You know, there's like one person in the audience. But they don't have Orca, you know, they have one person to just take notes. So basically if you weren't there that night, the only way you would find out anything is just the big meeting notes, you know. Um, you know, so there is, you know, it seems like, um, you know, we have a nice place that's kind of open. A lot of them are really, you know, literally they might be inside the top town office in a small little cramped meeting room, you know, which is great for Zoom because you get, you know, better acoustics and things because it's a small room. but not good for um, you know a turnout for like the bylaws or something like that where you know you get a, well <laughs> maybe you don't get a lot more yeah. people but you know yeah. you should get more, exactly. more attendance so I did call um, Royalton South Royalton to see what they did or Royalton to, to ask Victoria and they have a smaller room which is nice so they already had mm -hmm. their shoes but and they already had a television and they had they invested at least a thousand dollars into one piece of equipment the only advice she had was make sure that you have really good sound quality she said that was a real problem for us trying to figure that hurdle out and um i know lindley uh can't be here tonight but she did say in her notes to me that she was in favor of exploring um the option to see what's out there i did call our we have someone who does our computer stuff at vermont digital and i did talk called spoke to vincent and asked him if are they coming out and make helping towns do that so um if it was something i mean we could at least yeah, see no, if it was affordable yeah. we could get you know us and i actually i'll be honest i just canceled zoom because not that it was but we weren't using it so um but we can i mean it's always good to explore no and idea. see what yeah. the options are i mean no doubt I, I think that i always just have to chuckle because over the years it's always like anytime you do something that you would right. say this is a no-brainer once we do this yeah, like our participation is going to go through the roof, right? Yeah. And then it's like the same five people. You yeah. Know? So it's, I always get a chuckle out of it because it's like, yeah. here's Zoom, and then it's like, bing, you know? 
okay, here's Doug, here's Ellie, and you know, here's yeah. Owen. You know, here's Jesse and Thomas. It, you and know, it was all the same people. <laughs> <laughs> Except we just couldn't see you or touch you. We, you know, you were in the yeah, same. So. Yeah, that's right. You're on you the were phone. on the phone. Yeah, that's half right. the time. Yeah, so it's like it, it was kind of interesting. It was the same individuals, just you know. So. Yeah. No. So so we. But we can definitely look into it. I mean, I think the biggest challenge is you know if we determine you know. Well, back up. We used to do the meetings at the town office, uh, kind of where Teresa's office yep. at in the back there. Um, but the, some of the issues that people used to have was one, the accessibility of the office there is very poor, um, being that you know you get more than five vehicles there, it's <laughs> pretty hard to figure out where you're going to park. Yeah. Um, but it's just very confined. Like if you got more than five or six people in the audience, you were, you know, you were snuggled right in there. Yeah, there was some really crowded, crowded. Yeah. Crowded. Mm -hmm. So the determination was made, one, because of what we call overcrowding. Yeah, overcrowding mm -hmm. were like five people. Mm -hmm. But two, it was like getting more out of the town hall because, you know, we put all this money into the town hall that we weren't getting a lot out of. So it was kind of the, let's have the board meetings here. Of course, as we found out quickly here is the acoustics is very poor. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes we struggle to, you know, from this side of the table to that side of the table to hear each other, not alone, you know, record it. And and uh, we had, um, what was it, uh, uh, one of the waste advisory meetings that we had in here. We did Which like the Zoom thing. Oh man, like the, the person could, there was like two board, two, two members from Two Rogan members that were like in. from afar and they were trying to like, questions and answers and it was like, hold oh, on while well, I adjust my hearing. Yeah, oh, it, it was, was like, oh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, yeah. So, so I, we can certainly, I can ask yeah, Vermont yeah. Digital to come up and see what sort of money we're talking about. Obviously, you know, that's one of the concerns. It's a big space, but I don't hurt to ask. At least you have some idea what the cost would be. Two, two comments. One, uh, several decades ago, I was a pastor in a church, and we had a three or four inch curve outside. When we added an addition to the building, we eliminated that and made it ADA accessible, the whole mm -hmm. facility. As a result, the number of shut-ins that I had to visit reduced by about 90%. Now, not a single one of them would have ever said, do this for me. But <laughs> when we did it, they did come. The second is that the church I now attend in uh, Randolph and the church here in Bethel, uh, the community church, uh, started streaming the service during COVID and now we are doing a mixed hybrid thing. And last week for the first time since we were doing in-person worship plus the Zoom, we actually had people from the Zoom who don't live anywhere near here, but were sending in by a chat prayer requests. Now that meant, uh, of course we had the, the technological stuff that we had to buy and we invested in, and that's one thing. But then it also required somebody at the meeting would be monitoring the chat in order so that if somebody had something to say or had a hand up or whatever, we, we would know that. Uh, so that, those were the two, that's the biggest drawback. Uh, I would encourage us to explore it. Um, I can find out with a phone call, what it cost our church. So we had to do some things with sound as well as... That's what we'll have to do for sure. Uh, and and you're right, the point you make about Zoom is, is a valid one. We did it with Lindley, it was just Chris and I, but I can't, I'm trying to find someone to take our minutes. So I'm taking right. the minutes, we're in the minute, I can't also check the Zoom chat. And I'm trying to pay someone 25 bucks an hour to take minutes and we've had zero inquiries. So. We can certainly, I'm all for exploring it and seeing what the price is and figuring out how we can manage it. But, but you're right. But that's an, you're that's right about an the acoustics. issue if it's going to be a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
I would throw it back to the EIC <laughs> to that that issue of if we were to do that and we wanted to have it be a two-way possibility, is there, can you help us find somebody mm -hmm. to staff it? Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that would be an important thing. Yeah. Uh, and the yeah. other question that I would ask is, I don't know whether you all would be willing to take a feed off of what you're already doing that could go into Zoom. Uh, because that may eliminate, that, that may provide a lot of technical capacity. So I'll just throw that out there. Uh, and well, I think the, the other thing too, um, you know, it, our board is very accommodating. So, um, you know, just to remind people that, you know, the meeting of the select board is the meeting of the select board. So it's not the meeting of the select board and townspeople. So it's, um, I think sometimes we lose sight of that, but we've been very accommodating here. So a typical board set, I mean, if you went to like a city council meeting or something like that, is it's open to the public for the transparency end of things. Um, and there is often, a, a spot in the program with, where um, the public can comment. Um, but usually, there's no open dialogue back and forth. Like often here, you know, if, if, if we're talking about, I don't know, buying a truck, and Doug puts his hand up, you know, 99% of the time, Doug has an opportunity to say something in regards to that where I would say probably the majority of towns, Doug might not have an opportunity because it's not up to, we don't have to call anybody from the audience, it's our um, And I think we lose sight of that. And I used to, when I used to be in the audience, I used to always say to the people that were, you know, like, no, it's not, it's their meeting. Like, you have to, like, you're kind of like the audience, like, play. You're watching it, you get to hear, and, you know, hear it real time. I think we lose sight of it. So back to, when we were doing the Zoom session, at least as a facilitator of the meeting, it's very challenging for myself or whoever is the board to facilitate it other than being rude. And what I mean is when you have like, you know, when you have the, uh, the Brady Bunch screen and you see all the people on there and all of a sudden someone starts talking that might be in regards to an item, unless I'm rude and I just hit the mute button, you know, that's, that's there, very, it's very hard to facilitate. We do it meet. every Sunday. You know, we mute it, <laughs> so it's they like, can't unmute. so it's very hard, you know, um, to <laughs> facilitate no, the Zoom hard. session. No, well, I did it. I said, unless true. you want to be, no, you know, I mean, that's you know, the rule. I, so it's, yeah. at a certain point, we yeah. mute everybody and they can't. So I would unmute. say if we did, that's where I was kind of getting at. If we were able to develop a process to uh, have it, Zoom, it would probably be where we would want it muted, so the audience would be muted the entire sure. time, except sure. for, <clears throat> except for time. like the public comment period, you know. Yeah, and if they raise their hand, we would yeah. call on them and stop. So maybe during the public comment period, we would have the device somewhere locally where we can, yeah, be interactive with that, and then after that, it would be more of like a from a distance type yeah. of thing. I don't mm -hmm. know. Just and there may be other that. options that we haven't thought of. So I'll, I'll, right. I'll um. Reach out to Orca. If you can guarantee us, it will have at least 35 to 40 people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, to meet that goal, we're going to throw in this other idea. Yeah. yeah. Pizza at every meeting. Yeah. Uh, actually, we'll bring back the pop box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's work on, like, let's level up on our website and our presence online. Because if you really are looking to take, you know, you're saying you're accessible and you are, and I appreciate that you acknowledge that, and that's important to this this group. I also think we also have, if we want to see more participation, there's a different type of person participating and how participation is defined now is very different to in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think we do need to acknowledge that and, it, and understand that maybe if we would like to see more participation in different ways, maybe that is via Zoom or a Facebook or you know, your points about the social media with the historical society. I think that could be said for every one of our town groups and committees and things like we could all 
level up a little bit more if we had some additional guidance around social media and other platforms to make us more accessible. And I think that's at the essence. And I think our ask about this meeting is a logical place to start. Because if, if we can do it with this group, all the other groups, we can do it too. And I think so, oftentimes the, the reason why we do are able to have or we're able to invite the public into the conversation on the items is because most of the time it is only two or three of you, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's easier to have that because if you had an audience of 30 people and everybody's got something they want to say, we'd be here like all night trying to get... So let me items. amend so, my, my, my <laughs> intention of the word yes. participate. By showing up, we're participating in our citizenship, sure. right? So I'm not saying we're trying to bust into your business. Now, I mean, maybe we will if it's, <laughs> it needs to be, but I mean, and that's our duty, right? And to serve our communities, but by showing up, I mean we're participating. So I don't exactly. want I don't want you to misunderstand my term, my use of that word. No, I think we yeah. understand. I mean, okay. if, there's, if yeah. there's opportunities to, you know, use technology and things like that yeah. to our advantage yeah. for our community, it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So, so we'll definitely look into that. And I, I don't know where that goes, like. That. I'll have to get some pricing. If but something positive comes out of that, or maybe we say this is what we looked into and this is where we're at. Yeah, and it um, may be something that, depending on what yeah. is, what we need to do, is we just can't afford to do right now, and it would have to come up at town meeting and be budgeted for. And if there's a way that we can help, as the EIC want to help, our, as you know, our task, a big part of our task, is just to increase inclusivity. And so, to your point, Chris, I think. If there's one person, I know it's a lot of work for y'all <laughs> for one person, but if there's only three or four of us already, that's a big percentage jump to have one more person or two more people engaged. Um, and I think just from our committee ourselves, we've decided to stay on Zoom because we have folks that have young kids who they can't leave home alone. They can't, it would be a distraction to bring them here. Um, and it's much easier for them. Um, and then also just sort of selfishly, my mom just moved here and she doesn't drive because of her disabilities and it would just be so convenient for me if she could join via Zoom as well. And I think there are probably some other people that don't drive or have mobility issues or one car in the house and somebody's working. It would just be anything to make it more accessible to us is a win. Um, and so if we can help with that, we'd love to. Um, and can I say one other thing that's unrelated to this before we the thing about the training. Oh, yep, I have it right here. Okay. So go right ahead. Um, it's just an invitation to y'all. Babes Bar is hosting a training on um, overdose prevention. And I think we know that we have um, some pretty serious um, issues with opioid use. And um, recently, several overdoses, certainly since we've owned the bar, there have been multiple folks that we've known of who have overdosed, not in our bar, um, but in the community. And so we have invited Vermont Cares, which is um, a nonprofit organization that works statewide around um, harm reduction, which is um, a philosophy of care that is not abstinence only based. So in other words, it's a way to help people use more safely with the idea of reduction of harmful use. Um, and so we are gonna be learning how to administer naloxone um, or Narcan, which is like the the drug name. So this is something that would interrupt a potentially deathly um, opioid overdose in the moment that it's happening. And we'll be providing naloxone for people to take home with them. So we just wanted to invite you all. It's on August 23rd at 5 p.m. We'll host it at the bar. And the training will be done by Vermont Cares, not us. Um, we'll be learning as well. Is it open to the public? Um, it's an invitation to y'all if folks from the public want to come just to ask us because I think the facilitators are looking for um, at, at a max of like 15 people. So I could just put in the minutes to call babes yeah. to see if it totally. would be available Zoom. It could be. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's yeah, a great question. There you go. Um, I think we could certainly make it available by Zoom. And just to let you know, you and Doug count as one, so if you guys get one, you can count as one. One, one, one per household. This is a very accessible select board and town that we have. Because I can look at, uh, I even talk to Doug, how to use the computer, you can go online, find the agenda, tell me what's happening and stuff. 
but if there's anything I ever want to know, I know that I can call that town office. The Reese has a, all the girls down there will answer a question for you. Anyway. The only thing you don't get is the public comment part. If there's something going on here, I'm always felt very comfortable calling the office. And I know I called David a couple of times about something stupid, probably. But I know that you can just pick up the phone and they'll answer any questions. You don't get the public comment part of the meeting. But I don't can find the minutes now, I think. You can find the agenda with no problem. Oh, it is a very set place. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, and if it is, yeah, just call. It's always nice. Yeah. People read something, and then it's always nice when people call Joanne or anyone calls and said, hey, I saw this. What? Fun, or what was the outcome? And we can put it out there too. I mean, it, you know, just because there is a public comment period, if you, you can't attend the meeting and you wanted to, if you, if you had a concern, you can always send that to Therese or anybody at the mm -hmm. town office. All of us are, you know, very easy to get a hold of through email or phone call, um, and we can be more than happy to bring it, you know, bring it up at public comment for, for you if you're not here. So, so with that. We will open up the public comment. Um, yes. Public comment. Ellie's tough to beat, so you got to be quick. I know, you have to be quick. She was on it. I would like to make two public events announcements. And the first one is because I know you select board, you want to really get into the five and, and uh, not miss a wonderful event that's going on at the Recreation Center on Friday nights where you can get into your funky feet because that's what we're doing over there. Oh, you can wrap the queen, you can go funky, or you can do queen dance. <laughs> and it's really fun. So be at the recreation center at, uh, on Friday nights and do your inner vibes. <laughs> go around. All right. And uh, the second public service announcement is I know you guys don't want to miss our do a thon because you can run the 5K and then swim in the pool. Um, so that is going on July 31st, and you want to keep in shape. All you select people want to be in shape, keep young, and know you want to run the 5K with us. And I'll start tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so join us yeah. for, for a do a thon, and, and, and we're also having a silent auction, and we have this wonderful BMX um, a bike that was donated to us, and so that's. Um, well, what time does that start on Saturday? At nine o'clock on uh, Saturday. <laughs> yep, nine o'clock Saturday. Put the giraffe on at yeah. nine a.m. So, Anyway, so I'll And Youth Beats is what time? Youth Beats is at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. All right. Yeah. Yeah, 6 p.m. All right. Thank you. If we had to do, this would be magnified. Yeah. Zoom in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, I, I'd have to be calling on my phone. I don't, I don't have a Zoom camera. What are those? Go. GoPro. Yeah, that's it. You need a GoPro. You need a GoPro clip to your, clip to your visor. All right. So thanks for letting me do the public service announcement, and I'll see you all on Saturday or Friday night. Sounds good. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Ellie. All right. If you want it. If you can follow that. Yeah. So I sent a podcast to some of you, and it's kind of lack comfort or lack of all in Vermont. And, um, you know, we're talking about inclusion. We've been having some of these discussions, but we seem to have sort of let them go. My hope is that from you, from those of you who received that podcast, if you've listened to it, you've spread it amongst the rest of the select board. Um, my hope is that we can now begin to reopen that dialogue and have discussions and plan in a meeting somewhere where we can talk about this, where we can talk about moving this to the community um, and not just keeping it within ourselves. Um, it's a really interesting podcast. I encourage anyone here to read it. It's on VPR. It's their series, which is called um, Brave Little State. 
and it's about it's from Vermont. It's a great little state, and it takes place here, and it is such an eye opener into inclusion, into um, racial discrepancies, into how you work within that. Um, I'll just give you a quick synopsis of who's is, who's on this podcast. It's a family. The mother is white. Her daughters are mulatto. One is very young. One is like 12. One is in her late 20s, 30s having a baby, and the other's, her other daughter is trans. So it's a real eclectic um, dialogue, and it's a really eloquently and very direct and very strongly put information. Um, nobody's blaming anybody, they're just stating facts, and I would hope that people would listen to this and have questions, and come together and have questions. And it, for me, I think it's a great way to open a, open a discussion about what we've been talking about for months now um, during COVID, which is inclusion, color, race, um, what you name it, um, all kinds of bigotries, all jumping those hurdles within this town of Vermont and within the state of Vermont. And I think I'm asking that you consider a discussion at some point as a select board on how we talk about this and bring it to the community as a select board. I have to say, I, I listened to it and um, the podcast, I, and I, I listened to it, then I, I read it. I read the transcript and I sent it to um, my two daughters. And I, full disclosure is I graduated from mm -hmm. Randolph Community High School 600 years ago. Yeah. And, um, yes. So it was so interesting yeah. to me as a white female to think about the fact that I walked by that mascot. Mm -hmm. Never, mm -hmm. it didn't, you know, so when I was listening to what the girl had to say, it was so interesting and I, and I kind of thought back to it and, and um, my husband graduated from there, you know, about eight years before me. I have to look, there's a tote somewhere in this in my house with the yearbooks and I and I remember how prominent it was in some years the um the mascot. The mascot, yeah. And just you know, when I I just thought it was so interesting anyways yeah. to think about it because I I hadn't I hadn't, you know, as a white person walked by and thought, Wow, look at the representation yeah. there. And so it was very interesting, I thought, um, and was glad that you shared it, and I sent it to, um, to my daughters, because they're always interested. And then um, I was talking to my youngest daughter, Hannah, and she had one of the books that you recommended um, about Vermont that the, mm -hmm. that the gentleman wrote, his name escapes me now, he's the professor. Yeah. Hannah had said, she's like, is there a picture on there? I'm like, yeah, so she, I showed her the picture. She's like, we met him. Dory, <laughs> that's my oldest yeah. daughter, Dory. Like, Dory and I met him. But it was very interesting, and yeah. um, and it was a good perspective, and, and you were right. It was very non-judgmental. It, yeah. it was just, hey, this is my experience, mm -hmm. and I and I did think that it was um, very interesting, and 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 just I don't know, kind of eye opening. Anyway, so yeah. that was my my uh, if you care, that was my two cents about right. it. But I was told, but yes, I did graduate from high school there, so it was interesting. Yeah, and I, and I think you're right. It was a good representation of what you said. It was, it was um, not judgmental, it was just, here it is, this is how I felt. This is, yeah. Yeah, so it was good to know. Well, thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. So again, I'd like you all to think about if we could have a discussion during the comments at one point about how we could bring this to the community and start having this interaction as we've discussed in the past with the community. Because I don't want this to just sort of dissipate and not happen. I think we really owe it to ourselves and to the community and to our children and the children are coming up and our grandparents or whoever to really keep this ball rolling on this and really talk about this. And um, one of the things that this podcast points out is that this is an uncomfortable situation and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And that's something we all have to get comfortable with, that it being uncomfortable for not everybody, but for, not maybe for everybody, but for some individuals. And then maybe for everybody. And I say this all the time. Because I'm black, don't think it's comfortable for me. Please don't make the mistake of thinking it's comfortable for me. Because it's not as comfortable as it may sound. It's something I know that I, that I can take a part in doing and maybe moving the, moving the needle. So 
you know, I just hope that we can really think about a discussion of how to bring this forward and keep it moving. And, and I think, you know, like we had uh, expressed, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, I think at this point, I mean, <coughs> again, at least the way I look at it is uh, our committees as a whole is, you know, our committees are, we design these committees with the intent that the select board doesn't, for the most part, point of hand, right? So we, we give the, you know, pretty much the full power to the committees to uh, to establish the, uh, the information and figure out how that pathway of information goes through, whatever, no matter what the committee is. Right. Um, and I think what we typically do is we sit back and, uh, kind of manage that um, mostly mostly the time it's financially because <laughs> um, most of the communities it's more about our next project is X and this is what we're looking at and then we say how does that fit the budget so a lot of times that's mm -hmm. kind of the way and I know this one you know is a little more unique but I think you know at least what I'm looking for is for the committee to come back and say you know this is kind of where we want to go from here um, uh, you know, and that might be, I don't know, you know different ideas of um, having uh, different forums or platforms to speak from or share with, and, and how would that be? Um, and, and I don't even think at that point it's even the select board saying yes or no, it's more, yeah, we think that's a great idea. You know, what can we do to help, or, you know, or what can we do financially, or, or whatever, to, you know, put something like that on. So, um, but it almost seems like, I always, what I'm getting from the often is like asking permission and it's like no. you don't really necessarily have to ask permission because we've already delegated responsibility and we're kind of looking where does the committee want to go like what do you want to do I, and share that journey with us so that we can be beside you and help you along the way but not necessarily look for permission all the time. yeah I've tried to touch on this before but there's an element here that I think sometimes the select board doesn't see from my perspective as a citizen of this of, of Bethel is that the community is led by the select board, not by these committees. So if the select board is involved on some level, then the community goes, oh, this is a part of this. They see these committees as these little sub things. The select board is like, I say this all the time, you're like a, a select group of mayors, you're a group that is the mayor of this town and you have a voice. And when your voice is used to move things forward, then these committees can jump forward and do their work. If you, and I don't take this negatively, but if you sit too far back, it's as if it's not happening in the town. And I don't know if you know that, that you're looked at differently than what you, there's a perception and then there, is this literal thing that you are, but the perception is that you lead the town as a select board. So committees need you. They need you to say, hey, this is what's happening here too. This is a unique, in that respect, we need you to be a part of that. So, so let, me, let me come back to my name uh, as a select board member and make a specific request. And that is, as a select board member, I'm requesting that the EIC uh, come up with a proposed community gathering of sorts. And that you specifically come and request the select board to, uh, to, to get behind it, mm -hmm. to sponsor it, to okay. support it. Uh, with the resolution mm -hmm. or with funds, mm -hmm. uh, that so if, if so, we would delegate the planning mm -hmm. and the idea generation, but we would take responsibility for its happening. Mm -hmm. if, so, if we had a specific proposal that required funding. Uh, then we would be in a position to say, yes, let's do it as a town. Uh, 
Let's not do it as a committee. Let's do it as a town. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would give us uh, mm -hmm. something specific to chew on. Right. And, and I think right. we're just coming, I guess the point of view that I come off is obviously the select person role is seen as an authoritarian role, right? I, I see it more as help, help to manage, you know, the inner workings of uh, Therese and, and, and uh, her staff. But I think we've all seen in this town, uh, like when I first came to town, I don't know what it was, 16 years ago it, now, uh, I, I saw a town that was managed by three individuals, right? Yeah. And there was not a lot of empowering of the individuals. I mean, if you just wanted a simple thing in the downtown, they would say no. You know, it was very, that's the way things work. And I, so I think the way I see it is, you know, we have some, we have some really good community involvement, yeah. um, especially now, yeah. and, and keeping our um, committees empowered mm -hmm. to do the work. And it, so that's where a lot of times where I'm like, it's almost like, you know, you're getting my blessing and it's like, oh, you're like, we, you know, we've already given you a blessing, you yeah. know, or whatever it is. If it's Ellie want to do something at, you know, at, at the, you know, recreational wise or something like, come with the plan. Let's hear it, and then you know, we'll get behind you. And uh, because we've seen, you know, and I think we've all seen in our lives somehow, you know, maybe it's a, maybe it's an, an employer that you work for that, you know, you didn't have a voice, you know, mm -hmm. into whatever. And and I think what we're trying to do is is allow have that voice. And I see everybody, especially the ones that come regularly. I mean, I see you as the leader of the community. Of, mm -hmm. You know, Doug's always here. You know, he's been at every meeting that I've ever been to, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, so I see him as a, a leader type figure because he's been here. He's soaked it up. He knows everything that's going on. I'm sure if you stopped and asked Doug, he'd recite word for word what we did. It's like work meeting, you know. And, and I think it's the same thing trying to, trying to, you know, with all the committees that we have. I, I think I saw Joanne's hand up. I was going to say, I think this conversation, that the conversation you want to have is too big for a select board meeting. That it might be best to do like a Saturday or Sunday mm -hmm. afternoon right up here where it's maybe advertised on the town page, on the Facebook page, whatever mm -hmm. place people would be, um, read, look at. And it can be said, supported by the town of that vote or the right. select board mm -hmm. yeah. and then show your podcast up here yeah. and I think people would come out. Yeah. But to think we're going to do it at a six o'clock meeting, I think you're going to. No, I'm not this talking about that. This could be a really big meeting that yeah. you're going to But I'm talking about that. Yeah. I'm, talking about exactly what I'm, just huh? I'm talking about exactly what you just said. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well then I think that's what I'm yeah. here for saying. Yeah. He's empowering you yeah. to do this. I, mean, I just I just wonder though, like the, your comment Chris really resonated when you likened it to like it's mostly for budgetary concerns. What we're asking is emotional and intellectual feedback from you. Not we don't want your money, right? I mean maybe not yet. Not yet. <laughs> My friend, no, 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 no. Is that foundational we've, stuff. we've already written it down. No money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But really I think what we're looking for is more of that emotional and and the heart stuff like we need to know that we're all in on this and and I think as we further our, our conversations and it is a different as you said it's a very different charge that we have and maybe that's why we're we're still getting you know figuring out our landscape a little bit but I think it's worth it because we don't want to bull rush either I think we want to be mindful and and continue to be inclusive and thoughtful about how we're stepping forward because we don't want to exclude anyone by doing something too fast or not when we should. And, and I think, to me, that's what I heard mm -hmm. in your ask. Mm -hmm. Not, we don't want you to lead something. We want you to participate in the discovery of what our town is and how we can move in a direction where we all, I think we all share, hopefully, a similar hope, right? And that's why you supported this committee. Right, I, start, I think so. that should definitely, right, exactly. When the select board has created the, the committee, they've read Jerry's you know, great article on colorblindness, they've had discussions amongst themselves with a partner, with family members, with community <laughs> members, with employees. So, I mean, Bethel has 
is supporting you emotionally and everything else, but they're also a select board. And as you can see, there's a list of other things they need you to do. So it's just like the planning commission and the recreation. At some point, we need you to pick up the ball and run with it and say, you're gonna go do this. And, and invite the select board and they will support you and they will advertise it and they will hopefully attend and you know and all those things. But it's, and, um, and I think that they have, at least in my opinion, and, you could have a different opinion because that's fine. Is I think that the select board has, you know, they're off the starting block and they're certainly trying to support you and, and do and have done at this point everything that you have, have asked or suggested. And, and these conversations still go on, maybe not here at this table, but like you, when you shared that, you know, mm -hmm. your podcast. Mm -hmm. So that was a great opportunity for, for me to say, you know, to talk to people about their take and how they saw it. And sometimes, like you said, I think it was you, Lenny, or maybe it was Owen, um, that these conversations start small and then and, and they expand. And I think part of that is saying, okay, I'm uncomfortable, maybe I'm uncomfortable with the topic, but you start small and as you go and as you gain confidence in what you're saying, you know, you're able to, you know, I'm gonna spread it to my, you know, people and then you spread it to your people. And you know what I mean? And we're kind of come together in the end, but, but, um, so I, I think that, um, it's just my opinion, but I mean, I do think that the select board is supporting you emotionally and, and trying to, you know, get behind yeah. stuff. And, and, I, and I, I think my whole point is, it's really you, just. You rolled back the video. I don't think you heard me say that you weren't doing those things. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, I know, no, no, no I, I know. Just, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. really compelling to me. Yeah. Exactly. I heard this sure. comparison to budget. When right. That's not really where we're going. Right now. Yeah. So, no, I just yeah. I, I think the, just like what Therese was just saying. Often it's you know the select board you know has already voiced our decision by by establishing a committee and 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 adopting the members that we have and you know so I mean and I, I kind of so I not often it's kind of like you know don't you don't need to ask permission like you know go do it you know it. You know, go do the work for us. And I have, you know, oftentimes I have project managers at work that will come to me and, and be looking at something like, waiting for me to, okay, this is how you're doing it. It's like, you know how to do this. Like, go do it. Like, and if you fall down a little bit, I'm going to be there to pick you up, you know? So, that, and I think that's kind of the same thing as, you know, let us know what you're brainstorming. What is, you know, hey, this is what we're thinking. What do you think, you know? And bounce those ideas off us. But, yeah. but I don't want to personally, and I don't, I'm not going to speak for those, but I don't want to be the one, you know, saying, I think you should do this, you know, because no, no, I think I want to see the committee say, this is what we think we should want to do, you know, this is the way we want to go. And what do you guys think? And then we say, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Or, or what do you need to pull this off, you know, or what do you need from us? Oh, we need the town hall. Uh, we need and we need you whatever, to participate you know? and attend the event. Yeah, or right. if we can get a board member, or you know, or you know, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, anytime, just let us know. I mean. I mean, we are, we are only five people, so we do get stretched, <laughs> but. And you can't get disappointed right off the bat because only five people show up. There's somebody that sat on many more. <laughs> Don't get disappointed when you only have five people show up. Because next month you're only going to have two. <laughs> you have and, and when in doubt, offer you food. You just got to keep right. grabbing that bowl by the morning because yeah. hey, you're going to get it. <laughs> and just remember, Lenny and Owen, when in doubt, offer food. That's food right. Always helps. Food is the biggest. It inspires sure. conversation. Well, I think it they it, it said drops pizza. guards. Who was, was that? Yeah, Someone said pizza. pizza. Yeah. yeah. Somebody. Oh, <laughs> oh, we, we used to do the potlucks, you know. Uh, you know. But thank you. But on that note, I invite everybody to listen to that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I've lived that podcast for 45 years. There you go. I know. <laughs> Any any other public comment, inquiry? Thank you. Well, thank yeah. you. Appreciate All it. normal. Three, four of you that show up. Every That's day. right. Your regulars. Um, so Owen we, has his regulars. Babes, we have our regulars we here. We are moving on to. Uh, we put the discussion on there uh, at some point. Um, yep. I think all of us that attended the BCA there we came up a little bit on. Appraisal values and when when the town wide appraisal you know when should we be looking? We've talked about it for I don't know probably two years now. We started the we started the fund to start putting some money aside on the town end of things. Um, so I think the you know a couple of things that came out of the 
Yeah, everybody was at the BCA meeting. So a couple of things that came out of that was, um, well, at least on my end of things, there's two things that came out. One, that you know the town is due for one, um, and two, that um, there's a lot of misconception of what that means. Um, so, you know, a townwide assessment typically is uh, every, I don't know, 10 to 15 year event that towns have, depending on what's going on in the economy, um, to reassess the baseline of, of your grand list, right? Yep, absolutely. Um, and, and then you use that over the next dozen years to, you know, to assess home values off of. So we've been 14 years. Yeah, yeah, we have. Mm -hmm. It's been too long, and, and, and I will say, you know, kudos to listers. They have done a, a nice job of trying to keep, you know, caught up on those. But it's hard. If you haven't been inside somebody's house in 10-plus right. years, you don't know if they've built a new kitchen or what they've done. So I spoke to the listers, uh, at least two of them, Mo and Judy, and they are going to start looking at RFPs from towns that have recently done a reappraisal. And my... A set, you know, goal for them, and we chatted about it was it would be nice to get this RFP out in like this year, January, February. We know we are probably three to four years out from a reappraisal because there's very few firms that do this, and it would most likely you'd get a two-year rolling reappraisal. Back, you know, years ago they used to do a reappraisal in one year, and then they started to go into this. Yeah, now they go into this kind of rolling reappraisal. So I charge them. I said, I don't have time to write the RFP. You are the listers. You're elected official. This is your job. So I told them I would help them with insurance. I would make a call um, back to another town to see um, unless I was involved in a reappraisal when I left to ask them, what do you wish we put in the contract? What do you wish had been a little bit different to get some information um, and ask them to reach out to their local PB&R rep, uh, Teresa Guile, and see um, so who's going through one now. So. That's the, that's the charge for the listers, is to try to get it out and get it out to bid, and then if we can get it in three years, great. If we can get it in two years, great. But we'll see. Also helps us financially. We have an idea of what we're shooting for. We've kind of had this $300,000 kind of yeah. monkey hanging out there, and we've been saving towards it, and, and this is going to help us. But at least now we can you know, get a date yeah. if we say, okay, it's three years down the road, four years, whatever it yep. is, and we can budget off of that and say, okay, this is how much more money we need to raise. And then, you know, budget time, we can either pick apart that in quarters or thirds or however we want to do it to, or, you know, or bond vote it or whatever to, to do that. Um, I mean, I think one thing that we have been pretty fortunate over the last, you know, 14 years, I think Gene was saying is, you know, there are certain barometers of, mm -hmm. of the common level of appraisal that, you know, if you go above a certain amount or below a certain amount, it kind of triggers like you get to do one now. Yes, and, the state and we, will come in and tell you. Yeah, yeah. we've been very fortunate that Bethel has stayed like pretty close yeah. in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's actually a really good thing. Um, and I, I think the one thing that you know came out of it, I was talking to Teresa about, is you know there's a little bit of a misconception of what that reappraisal means, right? Mm -hmm. So when you say reappraisal of you know, like at the meeting that we were at the other night, um, the first thing everybody thinks about, oh, I'm gonna be paying more taxes, right? And it, it doesn't necessarily mean that anybody's gonna pay anything more or less. It just means that we're resetting the baseline. So, I mean, make it up. I mean, if everybody's appraisal went up $20,000 on their house, it doesn't mean everybody's gonna pay, you know, pennies on that dollar. It just means now the grand list, list has gone up to a period now, who knows? It may it be a penny savings to everybody. I mean, you just don't know. Or maybe the town has the ability to. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. tax rate might come down to <coughs> pennies, but you're paying the same but, thing. But so. you also see the other thing where properties that were on the, <coughs> excuse me, being appraised that don't exist anymore, sure. that have degraded, you know, that side of the coin happens. Yep. Also. Absolutely. You see a lot of yeah. it where it kind of levels out people mm -hmm. who are maybe their house has. Has, hasn't been depreciated in a while, and somebody who's, you know, you kind of, sometimes it's or just that. just built a house last year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the point is, it doesn't change the amount that needs to be budgeted to run the town or the school. Right. Right. It's, it's, that total is going to be what it's going to be. Yep. Right. It's going to be divided among the... Mm -hmm. Right. I was encouraged, <laughs> frankly, to hear that it would be two or three years. Mm -hmm. Because if we are, you know... Bubble. Yes. A housing bubble mm -hmm. right now. This is not the time 
right. do a reappraisal. Can I? Yeah, no, you're right. We, that, we need to, thank you. We need to let the house in market. Okay. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, you're not allowed. And that, right, and exactly, because they always yeah. do a sales study, and so I think, and that all does, a year like this always throws off Well, of course, because if you, so right, right. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, if you yeah. went you establish a new baseline at a bubble, and then the bubble breaks, and your common level of appraisal goes the opposite direction, then it will trigger an automatic. Joanne, so yeah. two or three years be now. careful on the way out there, because there's cones right there, and there's a piece of curbing right there. It's dug up from construction, so please. Yeah, all the obstacles there. Let Doug go first. If you fall that, you know where not to go. I was going to go over there. I was going to go over there. Oh, there you go. That's right. Well, just be careful that, on the way out. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, this was probably, I don't know, maybe eight, ten years ago, but um, it was either Barry Town or Barry City that happened. They had just had a reappraisal, and it was like within a half dozen years of it, the common level appraisal switched so drastically that they had to go and, and again, it cost town or city, you know, sure. you know hundreds of thousands of dollars to do it all over again, mm, yeah. because they had, you know, but I think right now, at least if we can just get a Get the RFP out. Right? Exactly. That's exactly the way And we can, we're, you know, if we can reach out and if they say, you know, I don't know, it's 400 grand and it's going to be four years out and we know we have to raise, I don't know, make it up $200,000 over the next mm -hmm. four years and we can figure out as a board how right. do we want to, mm -hmm. do we want to quarter this thing? How do we want to do this thing? Mm -hmm. um, so, because yeah. I wouldn't say we've necessarily been kicking the can down the road, but you know, we have no, so, we, we, we as a town have been, so we yeah. need to get more. for the bubble. We've been fine, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, starting a year and a half ago, shit at the pain, mm -hmm. yeah. Up to that point, there was nobody coming in hardly ever for complaints about their taxes or whatever, but now all of a sudden, oh, well, yeah, well, the home values have taken off, <clears throat> yeah. But, you know, and I don't know, whatever they give us for a slot, three or four years down the road, maybe things start to yeah. level down. Well, I, anyway. I was sure. encouraged by that. I, mm -hmm. I would like to see some time <laughs> between this current bubble and... Mm -hmm. So at least yeah. get the RFP out, that's half the bottom, and we'll see what we got from there. Yeah. I mean, I think you're going to see, you know, a large majority of the individuals in town won't really see anything. You know, you have the outliers right on each side that either hasn't made upgrades to their home that maybe is slightly overvalued, or you have individuals that have just built something, you know, you know uh, like we saw the other night. But a majority of people are in the middle, you know, that you know, really won't, won't affect anything. Um, but it'd be good to get that down. So we'll get some sort of the listers are going to get back to you with a Yep, I asked, them, I asked them to do it. Uh, well, I asked them to do cost. a draft RFP. Yeah. And that way we could put, then once it's, we should be able to put Perfect. the full RFP out in January okay. or February of this, of 2022. And then, okay. you know, see what we get. Yeah. Yeah. Numbers, yeah. Yeah. Then we go there. Right. It, it would be, it would be nice to get it in before this budget season. So we, can. Yeah. we won't. What did we do last we year? Won't. Two years, ago, we started, we won't. <laughs> two years ago, we started with, what, $5,000 in the well, account? Well, no, there was more than that because we, well, the, state our, has, the state has always yeah. given you, yes, the personal. But our fund. Yes, you did. Yep. And then, and then last year, we went up to, what, 20? Um, Does that sound right or is that too high? Mm -hmm. It sounds, it sounds like that's what we, we decided we needed yeah, to start. I think you might have went to 20. 10, I couldn't, I don't remember. Because yeah. if you put after we had decided mm -hmm. where the... Well, we had a target of where we yeah, wanted yeah, we the tax rate money. to be, yep. and we were trying to get to that. We put money, I think, in that reappraisal. We did, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, that's but obviously, it's going to be more than $20,000. Yeah. Come up but we'll see. And we have to see, too, how much is in that fund. I don't sure. have a town report with me, so because you have... We have to start doing some coin drops. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the select board will be doing coin drops for the that's next... That's right. <laughs> You'll be accessible. Six months for your reappraisals. Yes. <laughs> Is there anything further on that, or are we good for now until we get some okay. more? I just want to talk about info it. Info on it. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, ditching and culvert replacement bids. So WB Rogers was the low bidder, and um, so I'm hoping to make some changes within here. So their bid was just under fifty thousand, basically. But what I'm hoping to do is there is an 
you know, 8,800 in traffic control. And that's a lot of money. And we're going to see that moving down the road. It's just going to be expensive. So I, but I talked to, um, oh, Rick Wright, Bev and Rick Wright, on the Wright Farm, about, you know, working around the grain and the milk truck and things like that. Because if I can, if we could shut the road to local traffic, this would help um, reduce this cost. And I might try to spend it in a couple other places in, on the road. Um, either in East Bethel or here. So, but he was obviously the low bidder. Uh, if you don't know W.B. Rogers, Jeff Gilman, he lives on Gilead as well. So, um, so it was nice. Obviously, he gave us a good bid. I knew he would. <coughs> Could you just take us through the spreadsheet just a little bit? I well, got it's slightly little... lost on it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm assuming that the 48, 689, 38 is the total bid yeah. for WB Rogers. And I was estimating on the hydro seating, so yes. That's and then the 7110. Is the portion that's gonna be paid by mm -hmm. the paving bid because we are, part of this bid is ditching and replacing culverts in East Bethel and we received a paving bid and so I had budgeted in the paving bid um, for some culvert okay, replacement. So, the, so that 7100 has been budgeted yep. under a different item. Oh, well, no, it's money we're getting from the state okay. for a paving grant. And, and then the 20000 Is the ditching that we budgeted in the general fund yep. budget. So okay. this 21000 I'm looking at is going to have to come out of the capital road budget. Oh, gotcha. Uh -huh. So it's still my goal, which is going to take us a little bit, but to We've already, we're working on that capital road budget and we have it in the record and we add to it and we, you know, each year we kind of try to expand on it. And, and how, um, how is the traffic control? Because up above it says 800. So it's 800 per day times 15 okay. days, sorry. So what kind of traffic control, work? and I'm only saying this because I worked with Debbie B. Rogers on three of the four contracts, mm -hmm. right? three of the four for FEMA and traffic control was nothing. I so, know, and this was, so, so I don't know, the we're 800, paid $800 for nothing. Well, we're no, not, so. and that's what I'm saying. The 800 <laughs> per day, I but already told you. Is there flaggers? Is there... That's what the 800 you know. per day is, is flaggers. And so, but what yeah. his request was, he, he, came, he said to me, is it possible that we close the road, especially when we're doing or culverts? Close to local traffic or well, something Exactly, like because he yeah. said, if we do close the road, especially when we're doing the culverts, it's a 30 foot, he can get a straight piece across and he can just do it, you know, one and done, instead of a piece and a, yeah. you know. So he, that's what he was thinking about. And then we had a conversation about closing the road just to local traffic. Oh. And, and um, because what I'm trying to do is I don't want to spend all $8,800. I would like to try to spend that within the bid doing a little more work. Um, so I told him that a, it would have depended if he got the bid, and then we'd have a conversation about it. Uh, he and I would have a conversation about it. So yes, to local traffic only is what he's thinking. But yes, he has to, and, and the other thing too is the bid is very clear about the fact that he has to adhere to MUTCD standards, and that it's his liability. So, um, but we'll have a conversation, um, going to walk, I mean, we'll walk I, the project with him, and when we do that, we'll talk about it. I mean, I know when I did the project with him, the projects with him. For FEMA? And we, you know, dug, you know, we put culvert pipes in a hole. Um, worked pretty well, but again, most of the roads we were on, there wasn't as much traffic except for Lilliesville. Right. But Lilliesville, there's many different ways to skip Lewis, mm -hmm. right? Where I'm just thinking, like, if you had a couple of them on Gilead, you know, there's no way around, you know. Sure. How do you, 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 you can go up Mac But you know what I mean? Right. Like, without, like, inconvenience people yeah. a long ways. Well, I asked him, and, you yeah. know, I, we figured that the furthest person away would add about 15 minutes to their commute to go up mm -hmm. over Macintosh, because that's exactly what you said, detour them off, mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. they're going over Macintosh. Can you do 15 minutes for $8,800? $8, yes, I, I can. Well, I'm, I'm just, I mean, that's kind of the way I'm looking at it, is, yeah. you know, if you had a certain day or two where yeah, you exactly. said, between these hours and these days, we're going to be changing the culverts in mm -hmm. Gilead. You know, and if we yeah. agree upon an hour that, you know, yeah, you know, maybe enough time that people can leave for work and maybe, you know, this yeah. is going on. And, and he's, you know, and he, and he was open to dealing with, you know, the milk yeah. truck. And when I talked to Mr. Wright today, he was fine with it. He was like, yeah, yeah. he's like, I know Jeff, we'll deal with it. And, but my thing is I'd rather spend this $8,800 doing some other road work there. But, and or it comes off of the 21 that we <clears throat> find right. money for, you know. Right, and so what he's... And the other part of this too is obviously is part of this is 15 days. It's also East Bethel. So East Bethel, he, um, 
you know, obviously there has to be, you know, traffic control and flagging over there. So, yes, I don't necessarily want to take all the 20000 Where's Where is that paving in East Buffalo going to happen? Where or when? When? Where? Where? Yeah. So as soon as right you come off 14 on Factory Hill Road, you come down Factory Hill Road and you go around the corner a little bit and head up towards uh, Randolph Center Road, we're doing a point, I want to say seven miles, but hold me to that, right about a mile we were doing. We got a paving grant for that because East the uh, Factory Hill Road and Christian Hill Road are the only class two roads you have in town that you can get paving grants for. So when I was walking Gilead today, Ryan Slack had said, you know, Trees, if we're going to do this ditching and do this work, what would it take to bring this up to a class two road so that we would qualify for paving grants in the future? And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, you know, you won't know what it is. You have to look at the A76 standards, but it's so, I don't know. I mean, it's worth looking at. The amount of money that it takes versus what you get out of it. Though. Yeah. If you ever made a hole. Yeah, I don't know. But because right well, now you're but not I can't see for how a paving grant. On any of these culvert replacement projects where we can't just, there might be a couple where you say, we're going to have to give some notice to the public. Yeah, of course. Um, but, I mean, to save $80, dollars on, you know, it's one thing if it's on a main drag or something mm -hmm. like that, but yeah. I can't see why we would really need. No, and some of I the. I mean, it worked out pretty good when we did the other ones before. And some of the 8800 um, you know, is not going to reduce the 21 because there's some other work there that would be nice while we're there to take care of. But, you know, anyways, but it's like $8,800 I want to spend in flagging. I would rather spend either in work or take off. Yeah, no, I would agree. Yeah. I mean, if, it's, if it makes sense, I, yeah. mean, I agree. I mean, yeah. there might be a spot like paving is different oh, sure. because you can't just, right. you know, when you're cold, you're only, you know, a hundred foot section of road where paving your half a mile right. section. So you do need traffic. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Road. Exactly. Okay. So. No, I agree. See, but uh, we have met now with, I sent letters in to all of the affected residents sure. of Gilead, and I have now met with, or I either I have, or Ryan and I have met with several people already. So now we have, we have currently met with everyone who has called. So where is the, the, the color work going to be? Um, so there's Gilead. going to be four on Gilead and three in East Bethel. So all in Gilead's all are, Gilead's yeah, are Gilead's closer are, to the Gilead's are all happening on paving, yeah. except for one um, is going to be outside. There's actually, we didn't believe there was a culvert under Skyview Lane, and I mentioned that to Jeff, and he said, there is a culvert there. I said, are you sure? He said, I am, because I installed it. And I said, well, then you better dig for it, because we don't know where it is. We might have to put an extension. So I think we're going to get three culverts, uh, you know, unless we find something that uh -huh. we missed that's... Um, mm -hmm collapsed and then there's three in East Bethel that are going to be done and I want and, and he is going to have to start in East Bethel to do that work first so that we can get into paving um, so there's so, a method to the madness yep. if it's possible that you can close store here and close fa factory road and well, you can get to store hill and East Bethel if you're closing Section. Of just section. Factory Hill? Where are they going to go over Oxbow? They can go over the Oxbow, or if you've got <laughs> just doing Factory Hill, yeah. the rest of uh, East Bethel Road or Randolph Center Road, Randolph Center, whatever yeah. that is, you can go up past, the, you can get to. Past uh, Lincoln Farms? Yeah, just that. You can go past, go to Lincoln Farm, bear to left, uh -huh. and then you can come back. What's the word mm -hmm. goes by the dump? Water, waterman. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's doable. Mm -hmm. And if while they're doing the that the the, the other section of yeah. the hill, you can open mm -hmm. Factory Hill. Yep. People can get in. Yeah, it's got, yeah. When we're doing the culverts, definitely the paving. They're they're gonna probably come in and just go for it. So, yeah. so, so you're looking for a motion to award? Just award the bid, and um, because I still am gonna play with some numbers to try to award the ditching and culvert bid to, to WB Rogers, Rogers in an amount of forty-eight thousand six eighty-nine thirty-eight, not to exceed. Oh, well, I was gonna say fifty, but um, just because I need to. I'm I know you. You're, you're trying to spend money. Uh, I am. Not because to I'm trying to get some work, other work done. And with the time. intention that the. You know, we'll limit the traffic control number of yes. road yeah. closures. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm all good with that. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. 
We didn't. But the I heard two numbers. What numbers going in the minutes? 50. 48, 48 60, oh, 69, 38. All right, um, not to exceed 40. You did, you did say 50. So no, you say, said 50. I thought then you repeated it. So what are we putting in there? The 48? I'll make a motion. What did you 48, make a motion 48, 689, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, Alan already is using that money to buy culvert and to do it on his own. He's also replaced culverts. Oh, oh he is? Okay. Yes, yes. He, okay. So that's why I've come up with that. Because I was just number. saying, you know, you can make up some money there. I know, that's what I... I think we normally put like four or $5,000 there. We do, but it's... Plus gone. their time. <clears throat> and we're also, I'm also hoping, because there is another um, line item in there for... Um, well, no, never mind, because I still have to do... Uh, we still have to do... Okay. The people off from Campbell. Just a side note, the kid, the kid Graydon has learned how to cut a road. He's, oh, good. Holy shit. Oh, is it good? Well, I, we'll see how it stands up, but there's no more potholes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And then we had... Like and, the delivery. and then we had the paving bid for Factory Hill and yep. a portion of Randolph Center Road that we were just talking about. Yep. And parent low bidder was Springfield Paving. Do they go by Springfield Paving still or is it yeah. Sunapee Paving? Well, it says, if you look at it, it says Sunapee Paving, DBA, Springfield oh, Paving. Oh, okay. So they have... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, reading, well, reading into the record that their, their price was $74,758.25. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And they had a little more in traffic control, um, but I think that Pike was going to come in and do it. I think that I think Pike was going to do it in the day, and I think they were going to do it a little longer. But so, where does that seventy-four thousand dollars come from? We have a paving. We we received a bid, or uh, excuse me, I'm paving sorry, a grant. paving grant, for, and I get eighty percent, and the remainder will come out of the capital road fund. But we did get a paving grant for that's our, 80%. That's our one road over there, so we'll have that paved. And that East Bethel Bridge, I figured it bought us five years. We're out of East Bethel. For like five that's years. That's, the, that's yeah. it. No, seriously. Yeah, we will that's ditch, the only paved we road will, we have over there. We will ditch. We have patched the bridge. We, I, honest to God, I'm seriously, it, it yeah. bought us like five years. That's it, why we chose I mean, to that go that whole section Bethel hasn't first. been maintained in a long time. Yeah, I mean, forget, it was ditched. Don't forget to get the box boat fixed now. Huh? Box the, the gravel portion. There, the material is so far gone that I went up over there. There's material there? Uh -huh. there? There was. There <laughs> isn't anymore. There's a big piece of ledge sticking up out of the road. How is that not class four? I don't know. It never has been. It's class four. We used to plow that with yeah. town trucks. I, I thought know. it was a class I know. four when I originally. I know. Home. I know you did. That's, I just. Wow. I don't know I don't how know. that. Mo knows the story of how that changed the classifications he was talking about one day. Mm -hmm. That's not a class four. I always thought it was, was a class four, but somehow never been, apparently never, it's not. Met, not, not in the 66 years I've been around. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Mo <laughs> was telling me, well, he remembers back before it was, well, even road, I guess, or what it was before it was a... It, I don't know if he does for sure, but maybe because that road was used by the... Uh, a large portion of the quarry workers lived in East Bethel. Yeah. So that was a main thoroughfare to the granite quarry. Yeah, because he mentioned it was you a horse and up. buggy trail or something mm -hmm. years ago. <coughs> so, what's that? You can hardly drive it. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 when I drove it that one time, I thought it was class one. Because they're going on a goat path. Yeah, I hear, like, where are we yeah. going? You don't know what a goat path is. Come up to my house, I'll show you some goat path. <laughs> yeah. Go out to Oxford. That's, That's right. So I just need uh, someone to make a motion to accept the paving bid for Springfield Paving in the amount of $74,758.25. So, second. Yep. Okay, all in favor? I didn't withstand just because I don't normally vote yeah, on Yeah, that's right, so, exactly. Uh, doesn't really matter. 
And then our August 23rd meeting will be the select board's portion of the zoning bylaw. Yeah, I just, I know I didn't so, really belong in there. I just kind of wanted to get out there as people that, were reading the agendas in advance to kind of. Mm -hmm. Trees, what do you got on your? I won't be here on the next meeting. Won't be here? No. Okay. <coughs> I won't either next week. So what is that, the 9th meeting? 9th. 9th. August 9th. August so 9th. August 9th. The next select board meeting. I won't be here next week either. <laughs> yeah, so August 9th is no date. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so, people, there was a boil water notice put out today. Yep. Um, for, you know, it's a construction project. So, this is, was not scheduled. What we thought this piece wasn't going to happen today, but it did. So, that's why there was no notice put out in advance. Obviously, it's a construction project. Things happen, and that's what happened today. So, boil water notices have been issued. Um, but because of the work we've done so far, you know, usually this would have affected the entire water system. But luckily, this is just from a little bit of North Main up. So it is Falcon, um, North Falcon Drive, Highland Ave. Um, so it's North Main up to um, like Tracy's, yeah. But, and St. Hyacinth. But because we have the valves in, it's a good thing. So once this is done, uh, they finished it. The water came back on today um, before 5. So the water was back on, so there'll be a boil water notice, and uh, samples are already being taken and, and sent. So that's, you know, part of it. The good thing is when we change over now, um, they'll have access, you know, from the other system, so we shouldn't have to, no one should be without water again, except for that the Bethel Mills will be one day. And obviously we're trying to plan it to give everybody a heads up, so. Okay. So just so people know. Yeah, I went into Bethel Mills today. Mm -hmm. He has water. Challenging. No, just to get through traffic. Everything. Yeah, and it is. The upper, mm -hmm. and to the upper entrance. Yeah, but they're keeping one-way traffic through, so you know. But hopefully, uh, it will be wrapping it up. So in that same vein, um, you can see that I approved a. We had a change order from Tatro for eighteen thousand seven twenty-five. We're changing the Geico. Tank access, we're not sure it's something we missed in bidding aid. We never wanted wood. We wanted the galvanized, the pod to finish to make sure that it just lasted so that we weren't. Um, so that's that's in there too. Um, so that was the only thing about the bid. As far as the other thing was, so we talked about the planning commission. We just had a couple changes, which was nice. Um, no big things. But then uh, Dave had wanted to talk a little bit about Janice Punger. Uh, she's called all the select board members regarding her suggestion um, that you create a position you know, basically for her to become a local advocate. My takeaway from this is that you know, everybody's in support of something like this. But as I explained to Janice, we don't have the money in this budget to do that. This is something that would, if you choose to, would have to go in front of the voters and then maybe would be available next July and then it would be whether or not it's her or someone else. Mm -hmm. It's also very difficult to quantify, and, if, and I have said to her clearly, and I'm saying now, if we had the opportunity to fund a position, I'm not sure that would be our first choice of the town either, just because um, there's other, we have to look at what other need there was. She asked me about grants. Um, she sent me a list that she was provided from the Vermont Community Foundation. You know, I eyeballed it a little bit to see if, but if nothing really jumped out at me as funding. Um, I am going to send an email to, um, oh, I forgot her first name, Kelly, maybe Kelly Poor at AERP to see if there's money out there. But Janice was very clear that if we found a grant, she was not going to write it. Um, that she, she would be, you know, the beneficiary of it, but she's not going to write it. And I just told her we'd have to look out in the community for someone to write the grant because I, I, we just, we don't, we can't do it right now. Everybody is really, it's a busy time of year for the staff. So, um, so Dave, you, what was it you, you wanted to add to your two cents or 20 cents? About Janice? Yep. I got 20 cents on the cover. <laughs> okay. No, my, my whole thing is that she's not, number one, she's not the person to do that job. I, I truly believe that the person who does that job needs to be someone with some power, some pull. She, she has nothing. I mean, she's not going to get a state agency to move. She can holler all she wants. Uh, unfortunately, she's well known within 100 miles of here. So my point is, you need, 
what she's looking to get done is something that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. But there's plenty of agencies in the state that just need their ass kicked and get off it and do their job. And I think that goes maybe, I mean, I would like to put it in legislators' hands to say do that, but every time I do that, we're just up there to do this. We don't enforce anything. Bullshit. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be our leader. You're supposed to be. I'm done because I'm just going to. It's going to get worse. Okay. Yeah, I, I just um, when I talked to her was mainly that you know I think it's a great idea um, uh, you know to be able to have a tool to connect our citizens with information or in some cases you know physically connect them to the I think is, is great um, you know I where I was having a hard time um, with uh, with the conversation was you know getting the sense of you know let's say the board decided to do this you know would this be an appointee position that we would appoint somebody like a health officer once a year pay them a stipend you know uh, would be the contact person, um, or would this be a town office, you know, do you hire a part-time person, but trying to quantify, because you don't know, like, you know, are you helping one family at a time, or you're helping six families at a time, you know, or how, how much time goes into this, and then I had to explain to her that, you know, once the select board did make a decision on appointment or if we wanted to have, or if Teresa decided we were gonna have the position under her, then there would be the formal process. So that naturally would be, you know, allowing all that wants to, you know, either be appointed to put their application apply, in, yeah. or, or apply on, on, on that, which doesn't necessarily mean that that individual would get right. to be the person. Mm -hmm. So not to mention pay rates and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. um, I, I definitely think it's, a a, a discussion to have, and I think it's, you know, I think, well, once I got thinking about this, I was kind of really thinking about, we had talked about a little bit the last uh, year or so, but maybe we really need to take a look at all these appointee positions again, because just like when we started digging through, like, zoning application costs, you know, <laughs> and right. we'd say, okay, well, you know, we're gonna charge you $25, but it's gonna cost us $500, you know? Mm -hmm. And then trying to figure out, like, why are we doing this? The same thing with these appointments is we, you know, I know from being a deputy health <laughs> director for a short, very short period of time, that for the amount of time that you put in that position to get a, whatever, $1,500 stipend a year is not worth it. Like, I don't know anybody in the right mind would raise their hand <laughs> so I think some of these stipends might be a little dated that we need to examine. And I think we have to examine some of them to say, I know there are some that you have to have, but you know, you have to have it, is it working? Or in this case, do, do we need, are there some that we're missing that we need to have for our community and, right. and look at those because the pay rate scales are, I don't know the other ones, but there's like one. Cemetery like, commissioner, $600. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's so. like the amount of work that goes into doing that a year is, is way more work. Mm -hmm. It's definitely someone's dollars. doing it as a labor of love. Almost and I know, nobody's, They're not doing I know nobody's saying, well, I'm going to be the commission, commissioner of this cemetery because they want to make a lot of money. Right. You know, but we also have to <laughs> make it kind of worth it while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to True. cover, you know. True. I'll have um, Kelly look at Yeah, my conversation with her is basically almost same things. A good idea, you know, and she's strong-willed enough to, you know, to push, 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 and, but well, whether or not it should be a town uh, appointed position or a town yeah. paid position, um, I, I don't know if that's the path you want to go down. And I had wondered because a lot of times <clears throat> the common assistance that individuals need, you know, comes from identities that are not just in Bethel community, but they're in the regional com mm -hmm. community. So, you know, like yeah, I had talked with Teresa, maybe it's not even necessarily a Bethel appointed position or Bethel, maybe it's more of a regional thing where, you know, from Royalton to Randolph, you know, there's a, a person maybe that we share or, you know, I'm surprised there's not like a, 
you know, someone like a Two Rivers type thing doesn't have a yeah. person that does that, or the well, state yeah, like, doesn't um, have someone that links that. It's community action, uh, yeah. you know, with, where it's a regional yeah. establishment. If you have a particular issue like this, you can call them up and yeah. they deal with elderly issues, they deal with yeah. um, finding you know, help for people with drug issues. It's kind of an all encompassing uh, organization. But I think it's just like in Dave, I, Dave had mentioned something uh, earlier today, but you know, he, but a lot of times what happens is people, when they need assistance, they don't know even know where to go. Like, you know, they gotta call somebody to figure right. out who they gotta call. Um, and I think, I think her major point was having a knowledgeable person that everybody knows in town that mm -hmm. is the go-to person. And, and in some cases, people, know the right person to call but still lack the ambition to do it you know i guess so this person or the ability about, i think yeah. that was her thing is more than giving just a referral actually helping you get you yeah know, fill out the form fill out the form and actually know. get the service uh, which is go to you know, the meeting but it's hard I, I was thinking about what gene had said last time was interesting was what you saying was it ohio where you came from? and they had like this one agency and you could kind of go there and they the kind of coordinate state of Ohio that had offices all over. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's too bad because, you know, what Jana said is, you know, I, I believe to be true is that there's no one at the state level overseeing all these agencies. So, which is too bad. You feel like there would be one, you know, at least a starter, or at least a clearinghouse for like that, where you could say, all right, I'm going to go and maybe this is the county why this agency and then all these other yeah. Kind of work under this one umbrella. So, and I, I did tell her I thought I, it was, I thought it was a great conversation idea. Just, for the state. But I think there's a time frame to it. It's not something that we. So is this something we're going to go to next week? I mean, this becomes like it is, budget times coming up. Is that so something we want to do? Okay. It is if it not is a part-time job, right? So, so. In any way, shape, or form. <clears throat> I mean, I mean, I know I was in a career where I worked an hour a week. Yeah. That if you have somebody who's going to be the shepherd through all of this system, and you have one family, it's going to be a full time job for six months. And it's just the way it is. So I'll look at this, or we can look at this again around budget time. Yeah. I'll put a note in the budget so that it makes us uh, look at it budget time. Definitely a great idea. Just, you know, how you make that work. You know. Small town, small budget, you know. Yeah. All right, I will do that. Or, or is there a way that we can share that with others? Yeah. And I think or, you're right. Or empower, <laughs> if there is an existing agency that might be a little empowering, you know. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's going to be more than, and that's going to take more than, you know, a couple of days to sort it out. So, mm -hmm. the other thing was, um, so I have been in contact with State of Vermont Operations and Safety Bureau, and I do have a meeting with John Kaplan Thursday at one. We're gonna look at the downtown and look at um, signage, and I'm hoping to get a plan from John to maybe say, okay, look, here's what we, here's the base of what we need, and then you know maybe here's a step up of what we could do after that. So we kind of have a plan because signage is not cheap. Uh, so I, I think it'd be nice to kind of say, this is what you should have, and I had sent him the sign that Mr. Geico had offered to buy to of and he actually said no I don't think that's what you're you know an appropriate signage for you guys and so I'm going to meet with John Thursday at one and yeah. and ask him to the state work on it to do that so and I told Mr. Geico that I talked to him today oh yeah I talked him today I told him today that that was not something they were recommending but that we were moving forward with the plan and he was excited about that and he was afraid the select board was thought was mad at him and I said no their just concern was I said I explained that well, you didn't bring your concern to the select board. You have brought your concern to past town managers, and it just hasn't got right. anywhere. So I said we're, we're working on it now and talking sure. about it. So he was good. Um, so it's good news. State of Vermont finally, finally processed our 75% FEMA share. So we're getting more money there. Pevine is going to be delayed another year. That was kind of due to COVID and some engineering delays. But, um, and unfortunately, the state will sit on their 12.5% they owe us until every P 
piece of grass has grown, I guess. So, um, but at least we're getting the bigger chunk, which is a 75% they've been sitting on. For that, for our meeting on the 9th, nine. Nine. yeah, our nine, meeting? Mm -hmm. it, would it be possible for you to share a spreadsheet with oh, us yeah. of I what got we it got all updated. left sure, that's absolutely. owed to us so that we can... Yeah, absolutely. I did it just for the auditors. So um, what we took out in the loan versus what's left. And there's that. nothing left on the loan. We paid it off. So in or the what's what's owed to the town and yeah, but yeah. I actually have it all done because of yeah, the auditors. Perfect. So that'd be easy, easy peasy. Print that right out. Um, so okay, the line of credit for the transfer station has turned into a nightmare. <laughs> all right, move on to the next one. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> I have. I have laid that out for you. So where it stands right now is I have sent the documents that were seriously redlined. I'm talking seriously redlined by the auditor. Or no, excuse me, by the lawyer. Mm -hmm. Sorry. To John Dutton. And John's comment was, well, I'm not sure we're going to make all the changes. And I said, well, you run through your people what changes you're going to make. And then I'm going to send it back to the lawyer to see so what you sent it to whom? John Duddy at Bar Harbor. At the oh, bank, okay. yeah. At the bank. And then I said, you... Do what you're willing to do, and then I will take your what you're willing to do and send it back to the lawyer. If we're not going to settle on this, we'll have to go to Mascoma because Bob Fletcher's already been through this with Mascoma. But what John, uh, but the lawyer was obviously very clear, and I put that in here for you, mm -hmm. saying that you guys don't have the authority to do this. So apparently, once upon a time, the two select boards did when they bought a piece of equipment in Kansas State Bank. Um, what, what, what is it, an excavator down there? A uh, motor? I, I don't know what kind of equipment the transfer station that? has. Uh, several, they just paid it off a few years ago. So Keith saw, they said you guys signed a loan, which apparently, well, luckily it got paid off. So, so we Keith, didn't have to so get in yeah, there. So, so it didn't have to go in there. But so anyway, so I've sent this information to the Royalton. It's like where Dave has seen it because Jerry was on vacation, just said, this is where we are. So we're not signing anything tonight. We're not signing anything tomorrow night. So, or they're not signing anything tomorrow night. So what's happening is they're gonna have a due to Bethel. There's no doubt about it. I told Jerry that already, and we had only put 10 grand into their new account at Bar Harbor. So um, what'll have to happen is, you know, Pam will have to, you know, obviously with authorization from the transfer station, move money back in to pay the due to. And once we finally get it squared away, that first draw, that they're going to take, will take, is going to pay off Bethel. Um, but unfortunately, now, because of this information, it will be two loans. So each town is going to have to do a $100,000 line of credit. So if we draw, we're going to be, we split, every draw is going to be split between the two towns. That way we evenly owe. Because the interlocal didn't do it, and the statutes are, and what the lawyer's saying is, you don't even have the right to do this, Therese. This is what you have to do. So... That's what we're pursuing. John Duddy, God bless him, wasn't, I just said, he goes, so now you're looking for two loans. I'm like, apparently, yes. Um, one of it, you know, somewhat, I, Victoria had suggested that Royalton carry the loan and Bethel enter into like a memorandum of understanding, but that's not gonna, the lawyer's like, no. And the auditor's gonna be like, super no. So, uh, so anyways, this, this, uh, Bag of cats just yeah. keeps so getting crazier. Just keep kicking well, the, town is <laughs> the towns have to because the transfer station itself. Well, um, it's not an identity there. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, that would have been the case even if it was a joint loan, right? Yeah, apparently, um, yeah, we have no authority to do a joint loan, which is the way we started was we both right. were going to sign off on it. Absolutely. And then once I sent it to. Mm -hmm to the attorney because you know, I always send these things to lawyers to look at and, and um, Bob had emailed me back, Fletcher, attorney Fletcher, and he's like, so what makes you think you can, I'm like, oh, here's the interlocal. And then he's looking at it, he's like, Therese, he's like, no way. He was like, you guys can't. I'm like, oh boy. And um, okay. so, you know, it is what it is now, and, it, but I, I don't know how, now I have, I have no, when we'll be signing, but hopefully in two weeks, but we'll see. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, more bad news, because that's what we're going to do today, yeah. is the employer's Select share. Board yeah, the, <laughs> the, um, we'll have two of them. the state, well, here it is, the state of Vermont, the visas. We just received notification that they're going from 13.84 to 19.5. I almost swallowed my tongue. I'm still going to reach out to the state and be like, are you kidding? Because 
the majority of the people in this fund are state employees. So that's going to be a big hit for them. And um, we should. Uh, and so, anyways, so you know, it's a lot of money. I mean, I did. I this other, one's out, Gene. I think. Oh no, it's not. Oh God bless you. I thought it was out. We should get Thank other you. communities together and just protest and say we're not paying. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought that one was it's out. It's just so easy for the state of Vermont to just say this is. Out. You know what? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You guys take care of it. The local. Thank you, Gene. You know, yeah. we can't figure out what we're doing and we're mismanaging all your funds, so we're just going to go to the lower level and say, you all need to pay more. Yeah. And when you pay more, we're going to mismanage those funds again. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like... I don't know how. I mean, I'm not it. sure. You know, I'm, I'm looking at how we're going to come up with the money, and I have a couple ideas about some cuts. Obviously, it's it's cuts. I'm going to have to Especially when you're in the middle stuff. of your budget. Yeah. Well, not, not even we're in the middle of your budget. We just started the budget. The last so, time they did they this was... Out, so. Was three I mean, months, right? Was out of three or four years ago. They did it in October, and um, just like yeah. oh, so and I budgeted. <coughs> excuse me, uh, in the budget that you adopted was fifteen percent. It wasn't in my wildest when do we imagination see, um, that they were going to go crazy. Kirk, Kirk, and yeah, not for a, not for a while. He is hiding somewhere. I but saw. I just saw. Him. I'm just teasing. Yes, no, he's not. Yeah, I'll wait up to the meeting on the 9th, Therese. He's yeah. not. Yeah, I'll just give him something to do in the summertime. Yeah. So I'll just, I'll see what I can I mean, do. I'm going to reach ridiculous. out to All money bills start in the house. It's just, it's huh? just ridiculous. All money bills start in the house. So yeah. He's the guy. It's so, just ridiculous that what they try to push on. And that it's, I, I just don't know how anybody's going to come up with this money. Yeah. I can't believe that there's not some mass. And there may be. There may be some, a yeah. bunch of people screaming and I just don't know, but... I can understand it. So yeah, you're all done, trees for the That's day. it. Well, then you're no right. No more good news. <laughs> no, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's it. I think that covers the whole all ugly right. mess. Well, no. Remember, we got four hundred twenty-three thousand from FEMA, so that was good news. Getting our money back. Yeah, well, we're, <laughs> we're getting our money back. Getting our money back. Getting our money. Back. Getting our money. money we don't have. Yeah, mm. we're getting money, and so. some of that will be. Yeah, but so. Last I checked, we don't have a money printing press. No, account. we don't. I know, it's awful. Um, but I will reach out to Kirk about retirement. I'm also yeah. going to email VLCT and uh, Jen at the state. I mean, it's one thing out. to do it to the towns yeah. at a responsible timing of budgets yeah. and things. It's another thing to drop it on them as soon as their budget's just yeah. done. It. Yeah. Like, you have no opportunity to. To do anything with your money. No, I mean, and where are you going to get the money? I mean, if you're yeah. talking a few percent, mm. you know, a few thousand dollars, I can scrape together, but thirty, mm. where? Yeah, yeah. our budget's a little so tighter than that. One so, and a half cents on the tax rate. Yeah, and you get all of a sudden figure out where that's coming from. So, so uh, that's very frustrating. But so, anyways, Why I'm going to. don't pay it. Well, I don't know what happens, honestly. Maybe I'm, we ought to find out. Yeah, just send them a check and say they can't cash it to the state. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I am going to ask Jen uh, Grace at the retirement office what she's hearing. July 1st. VLCT and, and mm. see. Just ask them how they think we're going to yeah. do this. But i got to think that there's, you know, to reach out to the league or something. There's got to be a lot of this stuff. People have right got to be. What is going on? Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the fact that we're Dylan's rule is, you know, there's some, besides the revolt. The I'm trouble is, we've yeah. got a lot. The legislature took this can down the road for about eight years now. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. At least. And all of a sudden, holy shit, we got to do something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then they just push it to the local. And like, then you get the, the, the you get Beth Pierce saying, I got a plan. And then, Whoa, that's going to put too many taxes out there that we talk about. So now, no, let's mm -hmm. let Beth and the town of Royal yeah. and the town of Randolph mm -hmm. raise their taxes. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, yeah. too, I don't. Especially I mean, when you have no say in the game. Yeah. Right. Like, right. You, like, we don't have the option to say, okay, well, I don't know, I'm just saying, like, my company yeah. back 12 years ago, they froze pensions, and they said, okay, we're, you know, we're freezing your pension, you, you will have access to your pension at your age still, mm -hmm. but we're moving things to 401k and, you know, other, you know, mm -hmm. privatized things, and, and now, you know, the state, instead of just saying, listen, we're way over our head, we continue to have holes here, why don't we just freeze the pensions, right, promise the money mm -hmm. that people have, yep. everybody from this date on is going enrolled into a 401k. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what the world's come to, like, that's but true. they don't. They just continue to say, we don't have money. Yeah. You know, and it's just, you just throwing bad, it's like owning a boat, you know. You're just throwing bad money at it every year. Every year. 
I don't know why Bethel didn't join Beamers because Still Beamers did. is funded right now. Vermont Municipal Employee Retirement. I don't know why Bethel stayed with the state. Mm -hmm. Bethel, uh, Bethel. Do you have options? Bethel to, random. To I don't know if we can. I'm going to ask her. Because that might be an option. I think mm -hmm. I asked her once and she told me no because we'd opt, you'd opt it no, in. No, they want their money. Exactly. No, going, no. <laughs> you're paying in. You still have to pay your debt, but um, Beamers is funded, yeah. so, yeah. but I know Randolph and we're, there's four towns and Bethel and Randolph yeah. two of them, so they're eating it too, so, but yeah, yeah I don't know, I asked her. Yeah, it's, and, and we, we know that it's just going to get worse, I mean, it's not like this is going to be the end. No, of, oh, because we don't know what's coming. The can a little farther. Yeah, because they wouldn't. She had a plan. There was some decisions to be made, and then now there's a committee. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it's a little bit of a rip off considering we didn't. We weren't the ones who said, "Hey, just make whoever manages visas a completely political appointment, and don't let them have any financial management experience to manage our money." Yeah. So, it, yeah. So it's frustrating, but. Um, so anyways, we'll see what we can do. I'll make some noise and see what we see. But yeah, definitely make some we'll noise. We'll send a letter to the governor. Yeah, I don't, care. I don't mind. Sure. Invite him down to Bethel. Yeah. That's what she's doing. That's what yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's right. That's Janice. You guys go meet the governor. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. Select meet, select board meeting minutes from the twelfth of July. If I have any issues with those, we're good to. Well, I have one. Okay. Oh, good. Wait, just let me find it first because I got to write it down. All right. What? It, where is it? On the on the second page. Yeah. That figure there. I thought that figure was not six hundred thousand. It was six million. Up in the paragraph. No, I'm looking at it. Recreation, six million. I heard six hundred thousand. And I looked it up after the meeting because I told you what I thought it was, and there was six hundred thousand dollars awarded to several communities for. Funding. I haven't heard. I thought the state had had six million dollars that they were. Yeah, I thought I heard six million. Too. They were using for you know recreational trails and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure okay, million. well it's not. Oh, we'll I, just check. We'll just I will check. check. No, check. because I was. I thought you were talking about the the six hundred thousand that they'd advertised that they specifically gave to certain um, people had written for it. So they kind of did this announcement where they gave out the money. So you're saying six oh, million? No. Oh, okay. So this was six. This was six million of money that has been allotted, but not. Right. They didn't have a plan yet. On so they plan on what they're gonna. Exactly. Strings are gonna so be they honest. still don't have a plan. We yeah. we, we want some of that money to do the pool. Right. All right, Paul. So I thought you were. All right. Well, we were talking about two different yeah. things then. Okay. So I can. So um, so this should be six million. Okay. All right. Thank you. So I will fix that. Anything else? Well, that, no. Just need a motion to approve the select board meeting minutes as amended. So moved. I recused myself. I wasn't here. Okay. Get a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Vote that one in. Something's fooled in my eye. Yeah, there's something flying around here. Else. All right. And we had some, uh, there was quite a bit of uh, meeting minutes in the back there, the um, EIC, <coughs> and I saw the rec, uh, no, the joint board meeting. Yeah. And then these are the updated rules, the Airbnb. signs have been made. Yeah. Um, I think that letter from Tom Kellington was uh, very yeah, nice. Yeah, it was nice. Very nice. nice. Uh, it was nice. It was, and um, yeah, then at the very yeah. end of the packet is your is Mary Floyd has been working diligently to put this on a uh, celebration of 101st anniversary of women's vote. This act, this picture is um, a mother for um, with Scott. What's Stevie Neron's? Scott Putney. Scott, this is Scott Putney's mom. Oh. And, um, <coughs> yep, and different people are sharing things about, you know, their family members. And so um, uh, Mary really wanted to do it at the 100th anniversary. Of course, we had COVID, so she's doing it now. So it's actually very, nice. um, so yeah, it's interesting. Yep, Mary's been really pushing for it to get it done. And by God, she did. Very good. 
And then you got the updated version, but we made a couple changes to what you're going to be voting on. You've got your amendment of the zoning bylaws plus your report. Yep. So, and that's been um, the paper, the ad's been sent out in the paper and all that's already mm -hmm. done. All right. Any other business to come before the board? If not, entertain a motion to enter executive session to discuss the annual evaluation of the town manager and clerk slash treasurer. So moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? 